Yo, 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 yo. Yo, what's up? What's up? Oh, shit. Okay, there we go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yo, what's up? The shit Doc says panel? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. All right, so I'm about to unmute. All right, yo, yo, yo. Yo. All right, so. Hey, what's up? All right, so. <clears throat> Uh, so this time I figure we'll do introductions since last time uh, it was like sloppy as fuck and we just kind of like went into it. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, for, so for those of you that do not know, uh, this podcast is about, uh, it's focused more towards uh, rating and in-game rating, uh, but we also talk about other stuff as well. Uh, we, have, we have quite a few topics to go over tonight. We also have uh, uh, what's the word, and we'll finish up with Q and A. So, um, yeah. So the people I have on me are wow, on me. Oh my! Uh, the people nice. I have on here. <laughs> uh, the people I have on here today. Um, uh, Bach, uh, Bach Choi. He is one of my best friends. I've played with this guy for. Let's see. We met in two point one. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. Uh, and he is currently the Astrologian uh, in my uh, Sargatanis group. Hey, uh, what's up, he guys? Has, yeah, he also plays Scholar and White Mage and Warrior, and he plays pretty much every class in the game, actually. <laughs> what's up, everybody? How's it going? Um, so... Uh, my next my next guest is Frosty, uh, and many of you know him uh, from his own podcast, Mog Talk. That's actually how me and him met. Uh, how long ago was that? Man, a, a year and a year and a half, maybe a year I've, and like two three it's months. It's been a so. while. Yeah, it's been a bit. Yeah, it's definitely been a while. Um, but anyway. Uh, uh, Frosty has his own uh, podcast called Mog Talk, which is uh, every Saturday. Uh, and thanks again for coming uh, on, yeah, on man. my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> thanks uh, for inviting me on, man. Yeah, no problem, dude. Um, and my last guest is uh, Bandia. And I've known Bandia for quite a while, too. Um, he is in uh, Seventh. Uh, he plays Healer, Tank. Uh, are you maining ninja this raid tier, or? Uh, yes, I will be maining okay. the last raid tier too. Yeah, yeah I'm before that. And let's see, you, you joined like you came to Sargatanis a long time ago. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. It was, it was after Heaven's Ward. Um, I don't know exactly when it was. It was before Midas, anyway. Sometimes. Yeah, it was. Yeah, like it's been a while, but. It's been quite a while. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, I've known you for quite a while too, uh, and yeah, I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show, uh, like, last minute, because yeah. uh, I know, like, Chet had some RL stuff um, that uh, I wasn't actually 100% sh sure we were going to do Unchained today until, like, a few days ago, because, like, you know, there was just some RL stuff going on, but, uh, but I'm glad that we were able to do it, and uh, thanks for filling in for Chet. Um, but anyway, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, no problem, man. Uh, but okay. Anyway, so, uh, yo, that's it for the introduction. So yo, let's dig into this shit, man. Uh, I'm going to show the 3.4 trailer. Now I don't want to talk a lot about 3.4, uh, just because, you know, it's probably already been done to the ground. I know, uh, you did a 3.4 discussion uh, just like yesterday because <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like watching it and shit. Uh, so I don't want to dive too much into it, uh, but I do want to talk about the rating. I do want to talk about the new, the new primal. Uh, maybe a little bit of aquariums. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I'm going so to show the trailer. Uh, let's see. Let me pull this shit up. All right, you know, boom. I haven't even seen the whole trailer yet. I had it on and I wasn't like really paying attention. 
So this might this is gonna be like the first time seeing some of this shit. This I know it's kinda of weird that I wouldn't watch the whole trailer. For we have <laughs> that's just how we they know my friends. A power befitting our pride, our righteousness. When Wait, are we gonna watch the whole thing? One, no. Okay, cool. Just gotta watch the ratings parts of it. Okay, okay. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to pause that there. Okay, so I'm going to pause that there because uh, they're getting into fucking... What's the next? Apartments? Okay. Yeah, we don't need to watch that. Alright, so based on, the, based on the footage that they have shown, uh, what, what are your guys' opinions on this new raid tier? Uh, Buck, uh, you want to go first? Me go first? Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, well, I've seen all that, so... Um, I don't know. I, I'm super excited. I think, I think the thing that's the most important to me is that the fights are unique, you know? Um, I've been playing this game for a while. Um, this might seem a little cynical or, like, negative, but I, I'm a little, I'm a little sick of, you know, the same, like, um, recycled mechanics. So I'd like to see, I'd like to see something really different this time. Um, kind of sick of, like, you know, tank swap at three stacks. Okay, everybody stack. Okay, everybody <laughs> spread out. Yeah. You know, um, I I thought Midas did a pretty good job. Um, I I I think we'll we'll look back on Midas pretty fondly on on stuff like height error. I thought like that was pretty creative, and you know, I, I'd like to see a lot more than that, and I'd really like to see them, you know, take out of the box. Looking at that steamroller fight, that looks really interesting. I mean, you know, pre pre Heaven's Ward. Um, you know, we, we all got used to perfectly circular arenas, right? So that one looks a little different. I, I like the fact that uh, that the, uh, the the battlefield plays a, a factor, but uh, you know, um, you can almost see like a DPS check there, kind of like you have to kill the steamroller before you run out of room to. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of mirrors the uh, the demon wall, like the hard demon wall in AK normal mode, you know, back when, yeah. uh, back when the bees were actually like a threat, you know, and you had to LB the bees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and from an artistic uh, standpoint, I mean, it looks gorgeous. I mean, there's not much you could say about that. Oh, it looks, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Yo, what about, uh, what about you, Frosty? What do you think? Man, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I don't have anything really negative to say about it at all. I can't think of anything really negative to say about it. The only thing that I saw that kind of concerned me a little bit was uh, Alexander at the end there, where he's this big boss off to the side. Uh, and I remember there's being you know, a ton of complaints about A4 and how that was a s static boss. It didn't move at all, and it was kind of boring. Sephiroth? Yeah. Final then, Sephiroth, yeah. Well, yeah. no, no, no. Like, A4 was the one people complained about. Not oh, okay. too many people complained about uh, Sephiroth. It was kind of cool, I guess, because uh, you were dealing with crazy mechanics at the same time, and you were trying to hit this giant circle. And so... Uh, I'm kind of concerned that we'll deal with this not as impressive boss that just kind of sits there, but I'll see how it plays out. Maybe the mechanics in the fight will make up for it. He might actually get smaller, too. Like, maybe that's just one of his forms, you know? Or yeah. something, you know? Like, maybe he does, like... Maybe they'll do it like a Nidhogg or something where he's this, you know, big 
construct or whatever, and then he turns into like just a robot man or something. I don't know, just something like that. But like, like uh, in um, in the defense though of stationary bosses, I think that the only stationary boss that was really shitty was uh, A4, and that was because of the camera angle, because A8 was amazing. Rama was amazing. Like, Sephiroth was amazing. Uh, it was just A4. You couldn't fucking see anything. Like, at all. Like, if you were melee, it just shit all over your vision. Because, like, you not only had to look for tethers, but you had to look for the stun, and you had to look for AoEs. And why the fuck would they do that, like, <laughs> with, like, N64 camera angles? Are you fucking kidding mm -hmm. me right now? You know? No, yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I'm just interested to see how it plays out. I mean, I like having Bahamut where I, we could take him around the arena and position him. I think positioning a boss is a really neat mechanic to kind of deal with, although not everybody kind of deals with it the same way. Uh, I think so, but, too. Yeah, you know, I, think I can kind of deal with it. It's like, such an important aspect of tanking that, like, if it's completely removed from the fight, I think I think it... I don't know. I don't like it. It liked, Yeah, it definitely takes, takes away from it because I think um, the boss's position is like a very subtle mechanic in itself because if the mm -hmm. boss is like placed in a really stupid ass way like if you're one of those groups that pulled bahamut all the way to the wall and you did it the trash way you know and you just completely like you know did it the complete you know what i'm triggered now because of this i am <laughs> just thinking about this just thinking about this has fucking made me triggered like pulling why would you keep bahamut next to the wall it doesn't make any sense anyway so yeah. uh so I think it, yeah, I definitely think that it plays like a role, uh, like moving the boss and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other thing that I saw in there, you know, was the, uh, what I think was maybe the third boss, he turns into an airplane. I think they might come up with some new mechanics with that, but that's most of the impression I get, at least with Savage. Uh, that third boss <clears throat> was the one that worried most, because I hope that, that mechanic isn't too gimmicky. I hope it's actually interesting. Which no, one, the steamroller or the saw blade? The one where he turns into an airship and you jump on oh, his back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys notice those that arrows like, that were above the orbs? Like, I wonder what happens yeah. when you don't go up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there was one know, person that didn't go up there. <laughs> yeah, it looked interesting, but I'm just worried, too, that you know they might be a bit too off the wall with mechanics, but we'll see. Yeah, so, okay, so um, I really liked... The yeah man like I I was super impressed with everything I saw the saw blades kind of reminded me of another mechanic uh, in Terra which was an amazing mechanic it was really cool it was extremely punishing it was definitely a get good mechanic and I hope that it's just as punishing in this game probably won't be it'll probably give you like you know a stack of vulnerability and say don't do that again but hopefully if those saw blades hit you. Done. Yeah, oh, oh, Jesus, you damage down. Oh, just wipe it. Just fucking wipe yeah. it, dude. <laughs> just, where every, Man, every mechanic failure gave you damage down. I wish every friggin' failed mechanic gave you damage down, because then DPS would actually fucking dodge <laughs> yeah. them. You don't have to heal them through it. Man. Uh, anyway, no, sorry. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought that the... Uh, I thought the saw blades were really awesome. I thought Alexander looked amazing. Uh, and... I thought the steamroller boss, or whatever the fuck that was, I hope it's a boss, I thought that was really interesting, and I hope that there's, like, a pretty, you know, uh, like, intense uh, DPS check there. I hope it's an, yeah. I hope it's an either you kill me or I kill you kind of thing. You know, like at the very end of A8, right, when he's just spamming those J waves or whatever the fuck it, it is. It, right? it looked like it should be, but we'll have to see. Because yeah, there was hopefully. spikes on the floor, too, I think, on that platform, right? So... Yeah. So, so Zeno, I got a question for you, man. What's uh, up? In that video, did you see anything that's going to be the next uh, swindler for you, man? Uh, I mean, swindler was swindler? my dude, man. Swindler was my favorite boss in all of in all of Midas. Actually, in all in all of Alexander so far, Swindler has been my favorite boss. He's just so dank, man. He's in, yeah. you know, Machinery Bay sixty nine. Come on, dude! Like <laughs> they did that on purpose, you know. And during Prague, the the goal time to get to him this was four twenty. You know, it was like not only was he in Machinery Bay sixty nine, but the goal time was four twenty. Like this guy is the most dank fucking boss ever that has ever been made. Yeah, man, he forces you to get high. <laughs> <laughs>
very aggressive down, about low. it. Yeah, you got to get down and you got to get high. Yeah, man. Those are, those are the those are the requirements to <laughs> to to hang out with Swindler. Um. Okay. So, so that was the raid. All right. So, so I'm gonna play the portion of the trailer with Sophia. So here's the Sophia battle. All right. This is what I'm super excited about. Yeah. Let's see this. Shut up. All right, so. Okay. So, what do you guys think of that? Bandy, you want to start? Let's go back I mean, this time. All I can say is when I first saw the trailer, I was blown away by how beautiful that fight looked. <laughs> like, the art team did a fantastic job on that boss and the arena. Um, and the music and everything, it just aesthetically, it's probably one of the best bosses I've seen a trailer for. Um, very excited for that fight. Yeah, I yeah, I thought so yeah. too. I I thought the like the background, like when it changed, yeah. it was yeah. Whew, that was some good stuff, man. That was some. Uh, it wasn't as cool as turn nine, but it was almost there. Like yeah, it might be when we get in the fight. You know, it might be. Might be. Um, mechanically, I think. There's a lot of room for them to experiment with new mechanics with like the scale and the rocking platform and stuff like that. Um, I did see a, a theory on Reddit this morning from some Japanese people saying that they might, they think you might have to balance the platform based on like where you tank the mobs and where your party is and stuff like that. But it could be very interesting as a fight overall. So I'm very excited to see what they do with it. If that's the case, that's a mechanic they've never had in this game before, which would make it really cool, I think. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what were your thoughts, Frosty? Man, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Graphically, of course, it's great. I mean, going into that fight, I the only thing that I'm kind of disappointed in is that I heard if you fall off, you can be rezzed. And it's kind of one of those things that I'm in the middle of the ground with it, right? I, I'm happy that's a thing because then it doesn't completely just end it, the fight if you need everyone there to be for other mechanic. But it also screws uh, up a whole bunch of other things. Now I can't laugh at people as much about falling <laughs> off and then make them feel the punishment for the entire rest of the fight. Yeah, that's why Titan was... Uh, Titan will always hold a special place in our heart regardless if you loved him you know, or not. You either loved him or hated him, I guess. Yeah, and I liked, I like adding that mechanic in there. It's just like a super fatal mechanic. It feels a lot more serious. Well, people uh, like they didn't fuck around either. Like if they knew that yeah. they would get knocked off and wouldn't be able to be rezzed, it forced them to play better. Now, granted, people still died, <laughs> even though yeah. they were like under pressure to play better. They still died, but you know. There's always that, you know, sense of, of, there's always that fear, right? That if I fall off the fucking platform, I'm just fucking donezo, you know, so. Yeah, well, it's going to make at least the attempts on it a little bit easier. You can progress on it a little bit easier. If people wipe the mechanics, it's, it's not going to be so bad. Yo, when we were running with Rin Static yesterday uh, in A8, somebody mentioned that the fact that you could res someone who fell off is a direct buff to Dragoons. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. <laughs> what did you think about the about Sophia? But oh man, uh, Bandy and Frosty already said it, but can't really be stated enough. Um, graphically, it is gorgeous, and and that's such a huge deal. Um, honestly, Primals 
are probably my single favorite thing in this fight. I've I've done Sephiroth to death, Nidhogg to death, learning parties, clear parties. I, I can't wait to do this, you know, over and over and over again. Yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. That was that was part of the reason why two point one was so was so amazing was because right. it came out with three extreme primals. Like that's right. how I met like all my friends. Yeah, is in two point one. Uh, at the same time, I'm I'm a little bit worried. I mean, like uh, Thornton, Sephiroth, Nidhogg. I thought they were all excellent and they're all really well done. This is apparently done by the same team as Leviathan, and I have to say, Leviathan is my least favorite primal. Mine of all too. the ones they've, yep. they've ever created. Oh, really? So I, I, I hope they really redeem themselves. Tell me what you hated me. about Leviathan. I hated Leviathan, man. I didn't like it either. All, first of all, it was is extremely easy, and I don't like that. I I like it when primals are still challenging, like like easy enough to do in in Party Finder with you know a bunch of of uh, you know random people, and but. Man, Leviathan was just so easy to kill. Like any any idiot could could beat that fight. And um, in addition to that, like it punishes you for having high DPS. It's like, oh, you know, let's just arbitrarily kill you for taking the boss twenty percent. Yeah, at a certain point, and just little things like that. You had those ads. I, I don't know. It's just the whole fight just seemed really underwhelming to me. Well, I mean, like, you guys must be running with some really, really good players. I've wiped so many times uh, with Leviathan because people just fall off because they can't find where he's going to smash down next. I mean, that's, right. the, like, the, the big mechanic, right? Right. Can well, I find I, out where I, he's going to fall down? I'm not just speaking from, you know, running with, with you know, my crew and stuff. I'm, I'm talking, like, Party Finder, Duty Finder is, it was just, I don't know. I, I, I thought par Party Finder had a pretty easy time with Leviathan, to be honest. I, I didn't like Leviathan for very selfish reasons. Okay. Like, I fucking hated, oh my god, I hate this in fights too. Oh, it's just, it, it, it really makes it unfun. Whenever you cannot do damage, I fucking hate it. Like, whenever you can't do damage, I seriously just want to fucking log out of this shit. I'm not even kidding. Like, like I what just, do you mean? Like, during yeah, so like, phases? Or? Yeah, like, when you, alright, so like, for Leviathan, right? Now, on A8, it's completely different, because huh, those intermission phases are fucking real. <laughs> but in Leviathan, it's just like, oh no, he's diving, I'll dodge right. this, you know? And you can't hit anything. And he does, like two, he does like two dives, then he hits the boat, then he's targetable. That's like 15 seconds of just dick in hand. Like, my dick is raw by the end of the fucking fight. It's raw because I've been holding it for so long. And it's just, I don't Whoa, like... too much information. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like fights where, uh, oh, God, and even his ultimate was, was bad because not only does he do a dive, then he you have to click the button, and then the shield comes up, and... You, it, t it, it literally takes so long for his transitions. It's just, it's really irritating. Now, granted, um, uh, there were some funny, there were some funny moments where when we would do like cell runs and stuff and the buyer would, would just die. And it was a kind of a funny game to see how long he could stay on the platform for RNG. So like <laughs> he'd die at one edge and then and then Leviathan would like hit the opposite side, and his dead body would just slide across the boat, and Ugh. that that was very funny to me. But yeah. outside of that, like I really didn't like Leviathan very much. Yeah. Well, I guess to steer it back on topic, Sophia, um, I think a lot of those problems were, were kind of very specific to that fight. So I'm not I'm not too too worried. But yeah, I'm like, not either. I, I think I think that fight's gonna be awesome. What uh, funny thing that Chet did? in Leviathan real quick. Okay. So we're, oh, God, we're doing the fight, right? And you know how you have to stun that that ad that does uh, <laughs> the wash or whatever? What's mm -hmm. dread wash or whatever? Mm -hmm. Well, so Chet's on his paladin, right? And he goes to stun it, and he's like, wait, what? What? I don't have a shield equipped. And he couldn't use shield bash. <laughs> so, so the fucking thing got his move off, and we wiped. Because he didn't how have a shield. How does he not have a shield equipped? I... <laughs> Uh, 
You know what? Like, let's text Jet equation. right now. Let's let's text him. The Strum wants to know how you did not have your shield equipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you you cannot shield bash if you do not have a shield. It is proven, confirmed. You can test it right now. But anyway, well, uh, yeah. So I would anyway, have never known if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Hmm. That that scale mechanic does look cool though, and um, yeah, like like Bandia mentioned, you know, maybe maybe you're you have to position yourselves in such a way that you know, um, tips the arena or something. I th I think that'd be really cool and really you know kind of unique. Yeah, I think so too. I think it would be really cool if 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 they had that like like uh, you had to have X amount of weight on each side or not weight, but you know like mobs, like maybe. Maybe there was a small mob that spawned, or it was random. Maybe like they did exactly the same thing, but their character model was one was small and one was big. So then, like because of that, it would add in another variable. So if you got the small mob, you would have to tank the the small mob on the same side as like a majority of the group. So let's say you have like both tanks. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So then, like, or if you got the big mob. Uh, it could only be like the tank and maybe like one DPS and like the big mob or something like that. It would just be kind of, yeah, it would just be kind of cool. But anyway, uh, so yeah, like I think that those fights, uh, yeah, I think that everything looks really good so far. Uh, was there anything from the trailer that you guys didn't particularly like? Uh... Nothing in particular, really. I mean, I don't know. It, it it doesn't really show too much, so you know. I mean, it'd be too early. The rest to, of it was just the rest of it was just kind of standard trailer stuff that I'm used to seeing. Nothing too. Great Gooball library looks small. great. Yeah, the dungeons actually look kind of interesting. Actually, but they do look aesthetically, especially. Again, they're they're doing a great job with the aesthetic this by by the looks of it. Hey, yeah, what's up? The, hey, what's up? Yeah, the owl at the end looked pretty cool. Stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't like the aquariums. They're so small. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was yeah, dude, I've been waiting for aquariums for half a year. I was very disappointed. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Anyway. I think that's a pretty good segue into our next topic though. Uh yeah, okay, so um Okay, hold on, let's see here. Let me let me copy paste this. Oh, you're doing one of those on chain. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yep, this guy. Wow, really? <laughs> turn on is true. Okay, so uh, all right. So what what new mechanics and boss ideas would you like to see in three point four? Uh, Frosty, you want to take this one first? Yeah, man. All right, so I always have lots of ideas for mechanics. The one of the ones that I would love to see is just a reverse version of like falling off something, where like if you're standing on a pl platform, it's like height error or something similar to that. Instead of just like you falling off, it just shoots you into the ceiling and like squishes you against the ceiling. Uh, and I would just add some. It's like keeping the same kind of mechanic that we all love, right? But just adding it in a different way. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool, I think, too. The like other the opposite, one, yeah. the other one I would like to see is the kind of a black hole mechanic, similar to what uh, Ozma has, but instead of you know going to a one single point, you actually come to different points in the arena randomly, like aren't just completely disorient you. Um, so, say for example, it just sucks you up, and then it flashes the screen off for a second, the next second you are in a completely random spot on the arena and you gotta refigure out where you are for positioning and everything else. Everyone would probably hate it, but... I think that's, that's cool. I yeah, I mean, it, it would be definitely be something new. Yeah, Because, like, like you said earlier, Bach, like th they, they've they reused a lot of their, uh, like, I mean, mm -hmm. fuck, dude, Thornton is a summary of what final co or second coil was. <laughs> Yeah, and fi well, second and final, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you've Pretty done much. if you've done second and final coil, you've done Thornton. <laughs> but when... Nidhogg's like that too, to some extent. I mean, the old, besides Fang and Claw, there's no mechanic in that fight that hasn't already been seen in another fight. 
It's like, but you know, at the same time, the fight is still really fun. But yeah, I don't know. I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see something new. I'd like to see okay. something completely unique. You know? Can I throw one more idea? Out there? Yeah, sure. It's like man. bursting, man. Yeah. All right. So this tier is dealing a lot with time, uh, or it's supposed to, right? Uh, and so going into Alexander. It would be kind of neat. I don't think the Final Fantasy system could handle it, uh, like the core programming and everything else. But if you were doing a fight, and then uh, while you're doing the fight, at some point Alexander casts some spell called Reverse, and then it just reverses you back to where you were like five seconds ago. It just zips you back into your spots, and then does another boss mechanic. They did say something like he was going to be involved with like time or something. They, yeah, they, they were mention. really vague, obviously, but, you know, they did say something like that. I mean, do any of these ideas sound like they would be horrible to implement? I don't know. No, uh, they I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't think so. I, like, I, um, I, I just think that, like, new isn't, like, hmm, new doesn't necessarily mean, like, bad, you know? Like, it is, is, as long as, like, the mechanic is cool, uh, and well, for me personally, you can you can do damage while you're doing the mechanic. Then then I'm on board with it. I am completely on board with it. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you you might like my suggestion. Um, <clears throat> I think they've gone they got a bit better with Midas, but I would really like more interesting and rages, and maybe more soft and rages for fights where you're going to hit it on your first couple of kills, and you kind of have to deal with it, um, and like. I think one of the best examples I could think of was A7. I always thought the best in Rage for A7 was it just kept spawning a new ball every 10 seconds. And you're going to wipe eventually because there's going to be too many balls and people are going to die. But there's still a chance you can get a kill, you know? That's a really or just something brutal... Like that. Yeah, that's a really yeah. brutal in Rage. That's really cool, yeah. I, I, I mean, there's something more interesting than at 13 minutes the boss kills you. I mean, that's just not very interesting. Like, they can be way more creative, I think, with how the enrages work. Like, like soft enrages, the, the fight just gets mechanically harder and harder as, as yeah, time like, goes on until yeah, like, it gets to a point where like it's, like, no longer possible. Yeah, like J-Storm. Yeah, like, like, like J-Storm. That's, like, a good example of a soft enrage. Like, I want to see more things like that, I think. I think they're very interesting where, if it, like, on your first, you're going to have to find a way to deal with the soft enrage, basically. Um, but it becomes <laughs> less of an issue. They could have done something like that in T12 too. So like, you know how you had those those like fire the fire shit you had to stand in, right? You know. Yeah. And you had to have you know so there was so there was one, and then uh, you know after you did that set, uh, then there was another one. But but by the first okay so so when the first person stepped in. Uh, by the time the second one spawned, their stacks would have fallen and off. Dropped. Yeah. yeah. So what I think would have been cool is kind of like it's it goes along the lines of your like a seven suggestion is that if there would have been an additional fountain spawn uh, instead of him just casting uh, whatever the uh, flames of rebirth and you know killing you or whatever, uh, it would have been cool if it was a fountain in rage. So eventually you had to start like. Like, by the time you got, like, the third fountain, you had to start sacking people. Or, like, you had to have tanks use, like, their, their, their massive cooldowns just to live. So then by the time you got the fourth fountain, it was just like, holy shit, the whole party has, like, you know, two or three stacks. You know, who's going in? And then the first person yeah. to go in, just bam, they're just dead, you know? And like, but, but at the same time, if you don't do that, the boss is getting higher damage stacks, right? So yeah, exactly. I thought that 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 they could have done something neat like that too, but yeah, I thought that would have been kind of cool. Uh, basically like yeah. a creative cause like it is kind of boring when the boss just casts the move and it's just like, oh, okay, well, everybody's dead. Fuck, you know, nothing we can yeah. do goes through involved, you know, that's just it. That's the end of the fight. Rip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They I think that's something they're definitely lacking is creative and rages because just dying at X minutes is, it's no fun. Like if there's some skill involved in surviving past the enrage, then that's interesting. Yeah. yeah so, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, because turn is it? Is it my turn? What were you saying? Yeah, yeah go, Bob. Yep, go ahead, man. Oh, okay. Um, well, for, okay. First of all, 
I want to see if I, I really like fights. I really like fights where you have to manage space as a resource. I don't know if there's a. I, I'm sure there have been fights in the game that probably I, I haven't thought of yet. Titan does um, that, I mean. Right around the end, it starts to knock off. Well, I mean, sort uh, of a, a little bit. Yeah, T10 but, um, was kind of cool in that way. It had that yeah, soft kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> if it, I think you mean more of like you controlled where it was. You can, yeah, right? you have control over it, so so you have to actively. Um, I before I played Final Fantasy, my my MMO background comes from World of Warcraft. Um, there was a boss in in uh, Naxxramas, and he was a really easy boss. His name is Grobulus. And basically what you have to do is he puts he puts a debuff on a target, a random target, and when that debuff counts down to zero, it, it, it counts down and it leaves a poison cloud where, where he is. And that poison cloud continually grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. So you have to put it in a corner. But now that you have a poison cloud there, you can't use that corner anymore. So then if somebody else gets a poison cloud, they got to put it somewhere else. And if you don't manage that well, you don't have an arena anymore, and the whole place is covered with a poison cloud, and you have nowhere to go. And I thought that was really cool. Um, so there's that. But aside from that, as far as boss ideas, I want them to give me something that I can't even think of, or I haven't even thought of yet. Something like really, really, really different and, and unique. You know, like blow our minds. Um, I. I I love this game. I love I love the combat in this game. I love the raid content, but there hasn't really been anything that really blew my mind. Um, uh, going back to WoW, I remember there's this one fight. Um, it was like you almost had to play basketball in this fight because what you have to do is you have to kill these ads. You have to kill these ads, and the ads you walk up to them, and you have to right click them, and because they, they drop this item, and you pick it up, and it's like a ball. Now you're holding onto the ball, you can't move. Kind of like in basketball, when you're holding onto the basketball, you can't just run around, right? And you can't dribble this ball, so you are actually rooted in place. Now you have to um, click on one of your teammates, and you can pass them the ball, and now they can't move. So, And then you just continually do this until you pass it to a teammate who's next to this little lantern, and you right-click the lantern, it dunks the ball into it and, and disables it. You have to do this four times, so the amount of teamwork, I, I don't know, I've just never seen anything like it before. You know what and, sounds uh, really similar to that? Uh, what? Nissy? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, They got completely cheesed. We, we there was a, uh, um, uh, when I played Guild Wars 2, there was, uh, there was, an, there was something kind of similar to that. It wasn't right. in a boss fight, um, but basically... Uh, in Guild Wars 2, there were different, like, paths, like, for, for each dungeon, there were different paths you could go. So, each dungeon, uh, a single dungeon had, like, three to four different ways you could beat it. And one of the, one of the dungeons, it was called the Lost City of Ara, or, ooh, I don't know, something City of Ara, I think. Um, and one of the paths had you pick up this green, uh, this green ball. And it dealt damage to you, and I believe it slowed you, and you couldn't be healed. Um, or, no, you no, you could heal, but it but it was a really severe dot. So basically, you couldn't hold on to it forever. Uh, so what you had to do was you had to go down this long corridor, and you had to pass the green orb in between different players, so that that way, like the one person, like you know, couldn't die or whatever. I mean. Like, eventually, you know, when people, like, knew how it worked, you could just have one person fucking, you know, use all their fucking defensives and just run all the way down there and put it. But when people were, like, first learning how to do it, it was kind of cool because you actually had to pass the green orb between your party members and, and make sure that no one died, like, along the way. So I thought that that was a really cool uh, idea. And it wasn't even in a boss fight. It was just how you get to the boss. So that was just kind of cool. When you were uh, talking about that mechanic and that fight, it kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's cool. I, I mean, I don't necessarily want that mecha these mechanics in, but I'm just... Uh, I, wa I want to see something that I've never seen before and will never see again, you know? I, I, want, I want uniqueness. I want, I want to, you know... Something really cool like that, but is there yeah, like no mechanics that are currently in the game that you're like, oh my god, I could totally have this in every fight, and it would be super entertaining and, and uh, fun to do. Um, Dive I like bombs. variety. I like variety. I'm the type of guy who 
won't eat the same meal twice in one week. So I like variety. So I guess my answer is no to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about what about Mountain Buster? What if just yeah. every Boston game just did a Mountain Buster on top of everything else they do? They just uh, hit you with Mountain, a mountain Buster? Buster. How about a flatten? Oh, I, that, I like that works. Oh. Yeah, that works. He just too. freaking steps on you. <laughs> I, I like Akmarns though too, like the old G13 Akmarn, where it just pummels the tanks. That was such they're, a cool. They're all, they're all good. That was such a cool fucking uh, yeah. uh, tank uh, I, tank I, buster. Tank buster. Oh, that was the yeah. best tank buster. Like I mean, he steps I, on you like an insect. Yeah. Like me. Like uh, we were talking about this the other night, Bach, and you brought uh -huh. up that how different the fight would be if you could not use hollowed and you could not oh, use home game. Oh, yeah. oh god. It would yeah, be completely be so different. Good. Yeah, I was about to say it would have been better if it had made them through immunity. Yeah, you'd I'm have to be now. really smart with your cooldowns. <laughs> I, I felt like Hallowed and Home Gang really trivialized that mechanic. Yeah, but anyway. If there was a Savage yeah. version, like, they should, you know, that would definitely have to be implemented is, is because th that way you would be on such a strict uh, healer and tank cooldown rotation. Uh, yeah. it, it would be way more strict. And... I think that would be really, really cool. That was oh. the only bad thing about Ockmorn, I thought, was the fact that you could cheese it. By the way, uh, I, I can tell you what mechanic I don't want to see. I don't want to see the friggin' floor turn into ice. That is the stupidest mechanic. Yeah. If, <laughs> if, they, if they never, ever use that mechanic ever again. You know, I'm, I'm talking like Shiva. Yeah. I'm, not, the, I'm talking the about snail the, guy. the snail, snail guy yeah. in Holebreaker. Oh, Man, fuck yeah. that mechanic. If you they never what... turn the ground to ice ever again in this game, I would be totally okay with that. You yep. know what boss mechanics you guys are going to be seeing in 4.0, right? What? You guys are going to be swimming. You guys oh, are going to yeah. swim the spots. That's, that's awesome. I hope so. Uh, that's okay. I, I, hope that, so, yeah. I hope in 4.0 they go to like a water a water world. I hope they go to a I mean, water that's world. the goal with Alamigo or whatever. Is that it's supposed to be like a water area? I fucking yeah. hope so. I they love the water and shit like that, man. I think it's awesome. Hopefully we don't fight Leviathan again and his dumbass dive bombs. Man, I'm hoping for it. He'll oh. be wrecks your ass, too. <laughs> I'm messing with my boy Levy. Man, I just I wasn't a fan of the. I mean, I thought it was all right. I, it was okay, but uh, too it much was dick wet in and hand. Wonderful, man. If I was gonna sum up that fight in one sentence, that's what I'd say: too much dick in hand. That's how I'd sum it up, man. But okay, so, uh, let's see. Are we moving on? Uh. Unless anyone has anything else, uh, I mean, I can keep going for like. Oh, keep going, hour. man! Yo, All right, keep so going. since we're on mechanics right now, and currently previous mechanics that were in the game, what's the most enjoyable uh, to define? I guess the most enjoyable mechanics in a fight. Which one would you want to do min eye level the most, and which one have you done min eye level? And you're like, this is one of the most enjoyable fights so I have to do mechanically. I think anything that requires you to move. Uh, a lot. So what I mean is double plumes. Yeah, you hate casters, right? Double plumes. <laughs> oh, man, I play melee. I don't fucking, man, man, fuck casters, man. I don't, whatever. <laughs> nah, this is, <laughs> no, I'm, this is completely from a melee perspective. This is completely biased, completely biased. But my favorite type of mechanics are ones that force you to move, like double plumes and shit like that, man. I love that shit. Like in when I first saw double like plumes. Yeah. Oh, Sephiroth. Yeah. yeah. Spice coming out of the ground. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Sephiroth. Fucking double plumes. Uh, yeah. I just I like all that shit because you what it does is it forces you to uh, not only do the mechanic but you have to keep up your damage as high as possible. And what I like most about, well, one of the things I like most about this game is trying to do as much damage as possible while doing mechanics. And those mechanics are really, really, really fun to do when you try to like move out at the very last second. Like, yeah, yeah like when you move out at the very last second or when you move into an AoE and use the server lag against itself, I love doing that. And I think that it's just so much fun trying to do that. So that those type of mechanics are like my favorite. 
I will say the the one thing that's a little bit odd about that is I had my friend watch our team do A3 back in the day. Uh, he never played Final Fantasy. But he's like, man, you guys are just getting hit by everything. But we weren't, right? Because all you have to do is dodge the the line, the graphic on the ground before he does the actual action. And so, like, you're you're dodging all these lines on the ground, but you're actually getting hit by the moves graphically, which is really weird and odd. I wish they would kind of fix that. Yeah, that's kind of how the game is designed, though. I, I don't know how they fix it anymore. Does it ruin your immersion, Frosty? It, it ruins <laughs> other people's immersion, not mine. I'm used I, to I, it. Oh, it's other people. It's not you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, this is... For I, I people like watching it because this play. I don't have to deal with it now. Like I, I know that once that cast bar is over, I'm safe to do what I want, pretty much. Like, yeah. I just like knowing exactly when you're going to die and exactly when you're safe from a mechanic, you know? I like that the game's kind of clear about it. Alright, cool. <laughs> right. Uh, the, um, but, so, you know, the one thing that I was going to say, uh, what fight is that, though? Is that Titan for you oh, right now in the game? Hell, oh, dude, yeah. my, favorite, my favorite fight that has ever been made in any game in ever is Titan. Titan Extreme. I, I'm with you 100%, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, I don't even have to, I mean, it is, my man. Too. It's, it's like, almost it's, like a monthly ritual for, uh, for us. It's just like one of the like at least once a month we're bored out of our minds. We're like, "Yo, you want to do some minimum item level Titan? Hell yeah!" And then we'll go yeah. and we'll do it. And same with turn thirteen. Yeah. That's the other fight. That, yeah. I think those two fights. Yeah, man, they have a they have a special place in my heart. That's for sure. Have you? Are there any fights you guys haven't done min eye level? Um, we went. We did the whole gauntlet one through thirteen, no, all the primals. Yeah, we did. All, all been done. But we didn't do. We didn't do Cordius, did we? I don't know. No, because no, there's no point. You would have to force it. Well, there's no yeah, point really it. because, uh, like, uh, a four. I'm never doing Nissi because that's because yeah. like, Nissi doesn't exist as a mechanic. And uh, what's Nissi? I don't know what that is. Yeah, exactly. And a three. <laughs> they gutted a three so bad that it's. We killed A3 with eight fucking warriors. I, I mean, of course we we're going to be able to do it at minimum item level. Like, <laughs> we killed <laughs> it with point. eight warriors. The strat going into that was, okay, four of us are going to die. That was our strat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the strat. It was. We, had no, we have no means to dispel this, so we're just going to kill the boss before it kills us. <laughs> before we run out of warriors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got to kill him before we run out of warriors. See, the, the now, now you know what? You know what? Okay, new mechanics. Okay, here is a cool mechanic, all right? So, uh, well, I don't know if it's cool, but... <laughs> all right, yeah, so I don't know if it's cool, but, but, just follow me for a second. So, what if Nissi in A4, what if you had to sack your teammates? What if there was no, no, oh, we can do this and live? What if you had to kill people off? I'd be okay if it was intentional. Like I, I would yeah, I'd be it. okay if it was intentional. Yeah, I mean, like I think that would be more, an interesting uh, I, I was, mechanic. I was going to say that's something going going back mechanically a bit. Uh, there was yeah. a fight in World of Warcraft where one of the mechanics was you had to kill yourself to teleport to a different world. Like you had to take fatal damage to teleport to another world, and then you could teleport back out of that world and you would come back to life. If you died again, you're a permanent dead. But part of the mechanic was you had to die to do another mechanic. Like, you had to have people kill themselves. Um, uh, I, I don't cool. like actually like sacrificing a person. I don't know, because I kind of feel bad for the person who gets sacrificed. Because they're just well, like, <laughs> what if, what if, was, what if they made some... What Sorry. if they made some conditions to it? So, like, okay. So, what if you had to sack yourself, but when you went into whatever the fuck it was to kill yourself... You um, you had like rebirth. It gave you rebirth in ten seconds. So when you died, you got a buff that said in ten seconds you will be revived without weakness. Okay. And fair full enough. TP and full MP. So then that way, uh, the mechanic is specifically designed for you basically to be removed from combat. You know. Yeah, that, I mean that's similar to my suggestion where like you had to kill Say yourself to go into a different realm, and then you would come. You could like. You had to like kill ads and stuff in the realm. You know, it's fairly boring in the realm. But uh, at the yeah, end, yeah, I mean, to people do complain there about not and doing anything. So, yeah, sorry, man. Completely no. just like rampaged over you. Ah, no, it's all right. 
I think you're agreeing with me anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I'm agreeing. Like the only downside to like that suggestion, you know, would be like the 10 seconds of just sitting there twiddling your thumbs, and then that would be something you would hate, right? I mean, I mean you just do it where you had to rotate all eight people at some point or something like that, so everyone had to deal with it, or like you couldn't do it again, for example, or something like that. I mean, the 10 the seconds is about. Too you know, five to ten seconds shorter than fucking the Leviathan fight, so I'm <laughs> fine with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess this kind of, we can leave this into the next part of the topic, too, is because these mechanics are going to be a lot more intense coming in 4.0 from what we were told they should be, and they were going to make design changes to different jobs, and so I guess that kind of leads into the next uh, topic, right? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can move on if you guys want. Okay. Unless uh, anybody had anything else for the uh, for this topic. Bach. Nope. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, sweet. Yeah. No. Go ahead. No, Bach has something about this next topic though. Oh shit! Yeah, Wait probably. a minute. I double copied. Hold on. I'm bad at this. No, I don't even know what you guys were talking about. I spaced out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll all right so okay oh shit hold on wait a minute there we go okay so what what balance changes can be implemented for the classes to be more equally viable so okay i think what they need to do i think what they need to do they need to make paladin better because right now Paladin, in my opinion, is AIDS. To make Paladin better, they need to, one, for the love of God, make Clemency an Instacast. Jesus Christ, just make Clemency exactly like Equilibrium, right? Make Clemency, if you're in Shield Oath, it heals you. If you're in Sword Oath, it gives you TP. Because we all know that Paladins need fucking TP. Like... Why they have no way to gain TP back is is it just it just baffles me. I don't understand it. Like warriors have infinite TP. Dark knights have not infinite TP, but they have an amazing TP. Like you know, TP is not an issue for them. Um, like clemency needs to be like equilibrium. Like they need to take like they need to take something from an amazingly designed class and use it. Like, so I think that they need to do that and what they should do to make paladins, uh, like right now, um, right now paladins, uh, they suck as off tank, but they do the most damage. Well, okay. Uh, they do a lot of damage when they off tank because they can be in sword oath, but now granted you can be in sword oath when you main tank, except for here is another issue. Their threat, their threat sucks. Their threat is garbage. And the Savage Blade buff, like, it's, it's, it's good, but it wasn't, it wasn't what they needed, like, 100%. Because the issue is, is, is you still have to use Halone. You still have to use it. Um, so they need, to, they need to make Halone better. Uh, they, they also need to make, like, Royal Authority go from Riot Blade. And the reason why I say that is because... So let's say, as a warrior, you're tanking with a paladin. Um, and the paladin is using their DPS combo, which they should be using. They should be going, you know, fucking uh, fast blade, savage blade, royal authority, you know? If you're trying to tank swap, sometimes it makes it awkward when the paladin uses savage blade, because if they use it at the correct, or well, if they use it at the wrong time during the swap, which isn't their fault, because they're supposed to be doing damage anyway. Uh, you can pull back, and it makes tank swaps awkward. Um, like, sometimes I will literally go into defiance when I'm tanking with a paladin just so I'm 100% sure that they're not going to pull back with Savage Blade. And uh, that's really bad design, because with a Dark Knight, you never have to worry about that. So the fact that, that it goes Fast Blade, Savage Blade, Royal Authority is really bad, in my opinion. It's, very, it's, it's really stupid. It should be Fast Blade, Riot Blade, Royal Authority, because... Um, that's a lot of fucking damage. Like did have to rebalance it, but yeah, well, I get, they, I get your yeah, point. yeah. So they could knock, they could knock Riot Blade down just a little bit, but I Compensate, honestly don't yeah. think that having 
Royal Authority tagged onto Riot Blade would make them overpowered whatsoever. Isn't that like, like they're not get, like just by that simple change, they're not going to do more damage than a fucking warrior or a dark knight anyway. And they're going to be able to off tank better. So like, it just makes it really awkward, I think, because uh, Dark Knights have their Siphon Strike combo, and Warriors have the main combo. But Paladins have a threat combo to off tank. Like, like <laughs> the de it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. Like the way Paladin design is designed is whoever designed Paladin should not design a class anymore whatsoever. Um, Wow! Because, like <laughs> but when you find out, like the same person who designed Paladin was the same person who made Titan. How are you going to feel? Uh, he was on crack that day or something. He was totally fucked up <laughs> that day. He was, or 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 you know what? He was like, "Yo, I got a really funny joke," and that's what happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but no, I just think that like so basically. Okay, so I kind of ran in there. Okay, so I'll I'll stop here in a second. I just want to say one more thing. So I think for tanking wise, they should add. They should possibly consider consider giving Paladin Storm's Eye, because then there would be a very very small reason to bring Paladin Dark Knight. Because I do not think that a warrior should be mandatory for raids, just like I don't think a scholar should be mandatory for raids. Uh, yeah, and Yoshi's mentioned on that a lot actually about how he feels that warrior and uh, scholar are both uh, in too good of a spot right now. Yeah, like but he, it's yeah, but like it's the way that they're designed, though. Yeah. It, it's, so like by, perfect. yeah, by giving by giving like we'll say paladin by making a clemency insta cast and like equilibrium on top of that, if you give paladin like slashing, it would really really help, and th it would be. Like, because right now, if you go Paladin Dark Knight, like, that's not even viable. Like, that's not even viable. It's not even, it's not even viable. Like, you, I right. mean, if you're going to go in Paladin Dark Knight in Prague, you might as well just fucking just uninstall the fucking game. Uh, because you're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. But, like, wow, but, like, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm, all right, I just want to, okay, I just want to see a fucking. Well, if you have a ninja in your group, man. No, no, no. Because no? No, no, because the ninja, no. the ninja, and I'm pretty sure Bandia can, can agree with me, the ninja will quit that raid group. <laughs> I, I will kill him. If I had to, if I had to do my rotation, keeping dancing edge up the entire fight, I would kill myself or someone else. Like, it, <laughs> it like, but back back in final coil days, it was okay because you didn't have armor crush to also worry about. But now your rotation just becomes a mess, keeping up dancing edge as well. Like you lose so much damage. It's unreal. It's. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just think that if they gave Paladin slashing, or at least considered it, uh, there would at least be somewhat of a reason to go Paladin Dark Knight. You lose Path, which is huge, and in Prague is, I mean, <laughs> Path is one of the best debuffs in the game. Um, so you, you would still lose that, but at least you would have slashing. And the clemency thing, um, at least you would have TP, you know? So, I mean, fuck, just make it a minute cooldown. Just, just, just copy Equilibrium. Equilibrium is like the most broken, overpowered move in this game. Just give it to Paladins. It's, it's that <laughs> yeah. easy. Like, people talk about how, how good Felcleave is. No, 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 no. Equilibrium's the Equilibrium best. Equilibrium is yeah. OP as shit. Yo, would it be that bad if, if Clemency was instant cast? Would it be that bad? No, well, well, I don't I think so. Like, like, like they would have to, to rebalance it, obviously, because I mean, a or huge ass heal, you know. Like, I don't know. I, I just feel like if you're if you're hitting if you're hitting a boss, if you're able to hit a boss, but you cast clemency, somebody fucked up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and and that's poor class design when you have an ability, and it's like if I use this ability, I, I'm gonna feel bad about it because it's like I don't want to have to use just, this ability. Just, I mean, they could just make like an instant cast clemency proc off another move or something, so that like you know, you could use it, and maybe it had like a secondary effect, like you could do a bit of damage, like it did a bit of AOE damage around your target or something. I don't know. So they they could make it viable, definitely clemency, because it's a strong heal, very strong. Like, yeah. But you know, um, you make a you make a good point, and I I'm gonna totally agree that like they they, okay, they, they mentioned. And I'm just going to, um, this was actually translated from, from someone from uh, Reddit, but they said uh, that, that uh, Astro is going to be buffed, but the adjustment is going to be full throttle, and, um, and 
yeah, basically expect big changes to Astro, and they and, and that that tells me that that the devs consider that uh, you know if if the squeaky wheel gets the grease, then they consider Astro as the squeaky wheel. But I don't think Astro is the squeakiest the squeakiest wheel right now. I think it's Paladin. I think you're completely right. That why isn't Paladin getting buffed? Why is Astro getting buffed? I mean, sure, I love it because Astro is my main, right? But like. Paladin sucks a lot worse than Astro right now, I'll tell you that. I uh, mean, at this point, we're at the end of the ex- uh, expansion. I, I don't see any reason to do any major overhauls of any of the jobs. You do minor things to them, maybe, but if they put all this work into rebalancing Astro just for this tier, it seems kind of silly. Yeah. Because uh, they're going to readjust everything soon. I, I would well, agree. this was planned from uh, before uh, this rate tier came out, and they said that they have adjustments for Astro. Yeah, and it took an entire expansion. Yeah, so, like, like, yeah, good. like I, um, I just think that, I just really think that that Paladin is by far the weakest, and I think that they're like, I think the reason why they don't, why they don't want, like, why they don't see the issue is because Paladin is still the most played tank class. It's still the most played tank class. Like people love Paladin, and that's fine. I love it, man. That's that's that that that's fine. But it's shit. <laughs> it's shit <laughs> in comparison to the other two. And the reason why that they don't change it, I or at least I think I could be entirely fucking wrong. Okay, so let me but, let me take a second with it though. Uh, is it shit mainly because it doesn't do as much damage as the other jobs, and it's gimp in that respect? Plus, it's like kind of a little boring to play. No, it's uh, all right. So, in my opinion, the reason why it's bad is is these reasons. Uh, one, yes, it doesn't do as much damage as the other tanking classes, but that's fine. Their response to that is because it's supposed to be more defensive. They're not. Paladins are actually the least defensive the least. class mm-hmm. in the game. Agreed. They're the least defensive class. So also how can the you, least offensive. <laughs> yeah, so how can you have a class that is not only the least offensive, but the least defensive too? Like, their, <laughs> their change to shield swipe actually nerf them. Bulwark is the worst cooldown in the game. Uh, Hollowed is very, very strong, but the CD is nine years. Um, now I know CDs are going to be reset, but that's not. But that's not the point. The point is, is you're only going to get one to two tops per fight. Whereas if you look at Home Gang, you can get like three, sometimes four. You know, depending on when you use it. So like, and like Living Dead, it's it's five. It's five. Like I, I'm like fifty fifty on Living Dead. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. But it's really good sometimes. Uh, my favorite, obviously, is Home Gang, but I'm biased on that because I like lower CDs. I don't like CDs with super super long timers. But that's just me personally. But like the reasons, I mean, the reasons why also I've, breaks mechanics, right? I mean, kind of, but not really. Like, what mechanic does it break in Midas? Uh, so getting debuffs punch, from but... A7 uh, when they're doing whatever, what's it called again, where you just hit Uplander Doom? Yeah, Uplander Doom, and then yeah. you can just use it and just negate the debuffs completely. I, I don't think it breaks it, though, but yeah, you could circumvent mechanics, but that that's no different than, you Yeah, know. it's no different than using Living Dead, because you just have Benny in a tank swap. Yeah, not you don't even need Benny, you just need to get healed. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that's another thing, you don't even have to have Benny. But, uh, like, they're, like, so the the damage is one thing, but like their CDs are really really bad. You have a ninety minute or a ninety second cooldown, which is amazing. Rampart is amazing in my opinion; it's fucking awesome. But the next CD you have are Bulwark and Sentinel. Both are three minutes. Three minutes? Like there's nothing in between. There's nothing in between. Dark like, Knight's like that too. But. Yeah, but but Dark Knight has Dark Mind, which but Paladins have. Um, Sheltron. Sheltron, thank you. Yeah, Sheltron. Yeah, but my like, yeah, but like my argument to that is, uh, dar- uh, if you're tanking something physical, y- the chances of you having reprisal on that enemy is very high. So while you know what though, the fact that we're comparing Paladin to Dark Knight exposes another problem, and I I think when it comes to class balance, you can't look at it for class like uh, class versus class. 
Like it's it's not it's not that simple. And you kind of mentioned this before, but it has a lot to do. There are two aspects to class balance. Um, it, uh, when when a class is imbalanced, it could be imbalanced in one of two ways. One, it could be too weak to the point where you don't want to take that class. And we'll, we've seen that before with Warrior in, in 2.0, where they're complete garbage. Uh, Dragoon in in oh, two point, in, in Final Coil, yeah. like the beginning of Final Coil, they were out, an outright liability to the group. Everyone, you know, they needed like fucking 8,000 HP just to survive like basic mechanics like Mega Flare. And they're a complete detriment to the party. And and th that's on the on one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is when a class is so overpowered that you have to take them, and that limits your options um, everywhere else. And two such examples, arguably three, is warrior right now, scholar right now, and ninja right now. And those three classes are are overpowered. And I think the biggest problems lie with warrior and scholar. Um, is like right now we're talking about Paladin and, and versus Dark Knight as why Paladin's not viable to replace Dark Knight as Warrior's partner, but I think their goal should be to make it so Paladin and Dark Knight are va uh, are viable without a Warrior, and same thing with White Mage Astro, and they're taking steps kind of in the right direction with Astro, but I think the balance should be not with just classes, but like pairings, you know, all three. Or uh, tank pairings should be viable, and all three healer pairings should be viable. But that's not the case because of how strong warrior and scholar are. They're so OP, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, yeah, think I think that I think the ninja. Too. I think the ninja is uh, mandatory for serious prog. If you don't have a ninja, then you're missing out on you're missing out on uh, fucking trick, uh, shade, smoke. Uh, you're missing out on so much shit. Gold as well, which is gold. Good. Yeah, gold. So much shit. Like, and uh, this is also a subtle thing, but uh, whenever you have two targets, if you stick the ninja on the Dark Knight, even though it kind of sucks that they have to put yeah, a slash no, in. It, it's more rate damage. Right? Yeah, it, it, is, it is still higher rate damage. So yeah. uh, I think that when you compare a dragoon to a ninja or a monk to a ninja, a ninja, like ninjas are my favorite melee. Like, and it's oh, by a yeah. significant, like now to play, that's a different story <laughs> to play. Monk is my favorite melee. Right. But when you look at the strengths and the weaknesses, uh, and what each melee job brings, Ninja crushes the other two. It just crushes the other two. Like there's no competition whatsoever, at least in my opinion. Uh, like, so with a monk, you get single high target greed damage, um, and mantra. And Mantra is amazing, but Mantra is like th the range is small. It's very situational. You the know? range blows. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just so. So, uh, and like the groups I run with, we have a we have a Dark Knight. So Dragon Kick doesn't matter. Dragon Kick doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. um, and when you look at like Dragoon, they bring Piercing, and they bring uh, fucking Battle Litany, and Battle Litany is amazing too. But it's not better than Trick, Goad. And aggro shifts. There's no you know, way, man. You know what? Um, you know what I think they should do? I think... I think slashing debuff and piercing debuff are like... They're they're kind of like... I guess they're... they're I, I think it's a really flawed design because it's like you need to have slashing. And you don't want it coming from your ninja because your ninja doesn't want to give it. So... You know, that, that causes such a huge problem with not bringing a warrior. And same thing with piercing is like, you know, it, it suppresses monk because it's it's like, okay, you want to bring a ninja, you want to bring a dragoon to make your bard slash machinist happy. So where does that leave monk, right? I mean, um, if they got rid of all that together, you know what? Storm's Eye gives the warrior a, a certain percentage increase or, or, or maybe it just gives a buff to all physical damage or something like that or... No, sorry, that that won't work. But anyway, I don't want. I don't think it should be mandatory to bring a certain class just just because they provide a certain debuff. I think that's really stupid. Like, um, as it stands right now, every class is viable. Paladin's viable. We we went warrior paladin and we brought a monk. Like uh, in my last static, it was viable. But what's not viable is Dark Knight plus Paladin. That is yeah. not viable. Like some groups make it work, but it's just it's trash. 
And, and that's know, what they need to fix. And it's not even the fact that it's it's not even Paladin's fault. Because mm -hmm. both Paladin and Dark Knight want to tank the boss. They both want to. They like 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 even if Paladin is off tanking, they're still using a threat ability while they're off tanking. So it does like it, it clashes, but at the same time, uh it's more so like let's say that you did bring a paladin and a dark knight the dark knight is going to do way more damage main tanking than the paladin because they benefit from reprisal and they benefit from blood price whereas a paladin the only thing they get is shield swipe when they when they tank uh in my opinion uh an off tank paladin is still higher dps and my reason being is because the you're constantly spamming Royal Authority as opposed to using Rage of Halone. And I think that over the course of a fight, you will gain more damage by spamming Royal Authority than you will Rage of Halone. Because maybe <laughs> maybe I'm just bad at Paladin, but whenever I'm on Paladin, I it, it has to be like every third combo, I have to do Rage of Halone or I'm going to lose fucking threat. Now maybe I have it like maybe I just fucking suck, but I mean Paladin that's kind of threat, the point too though, right? You want to have that Rage of Halone in there for that debuff just to be in yeah. there. I don't think so. Debuff. No, I don't think so. I, I think the strength debuff, and that's actually another reason why I think Paladin sucks, is is because Halone debuff is worthless. It is yeah, worthless. It's not good. Yeah. Like it, it is uh like delirium versus Halone is no is like no competition. Like delirium crushes Halone. Because uh, that, strength that, to fight, that could very well change though that could that, very well change. that's I mean, true that's, that's awesome true though, right that's true it could it, it could change alone alone buff wasn't too, isn't too bad when like tanking say nidhog when he's in dragoon form or whatever it was useful there uh it's useful for a few other things i don't know but i mean it, it depends I mean, one on of the, the fight issues design. is uh, is is all aoe damage on the raid is either magic or darkness yeah that's exactly yeah, what that's i was true. about to say was was that the damage that really matters, like when you do A8, for example, you don't give a shit about the fucking double rocket punch. Fuck, you can t you can have both tanks take it in DPS stance and just use a CD. Who cares that it's physical? It doesn't matter. What really fucking hurts is the stack and the praise. The long needle. Yeah, the long needle. And yeah, that's fair. Like Halone doesn't affect that. So, so, I mean, that could be a change in fight design that they need to do yeah. to make that palace more yeah, viable. Yeah, that is right? very true. That is very true. Uh, that... I think um, the only fight that is mattered for raid damage is Earthshakers in 13. I think that's the only like, really raid mechanic that isn't just hitting Sometimes the tank you, that yeah. is mattered. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's you're forced well. to freaking hello back then anyway. So yeah, you actually. were. I'm just saying that I think that's like the only time I can think where the raid takes a lot of physical damage is Earthshaker. Yeah. Everything else is magic. Okay. Well, um, let's take a step away from tanks for a bit. What do you guys think about healer balance right now? It's the same as tanks. You need a scholar. Yeah, you need you, know? you need a scholar. So um, similar position. Again, going back to okay. So Astro is getting buffed in three point four. Um, they said that. Uh, yeah. Again, they said they're going full throttle. Astro. Uh, Astro being used by players with high skill level makes it scary, and that uh, players with a high skill ceiling may find it surprising that su such adjustments are implemented. Um, that's it's pretty that's pretty cryptic and and kind of vague. So I don't I don't really know what to make of this statement. Um, as an Astro main, I'll tell you right now, Astro is really strong right now, and people don't realize it. And this tells me that that um, SE is buffing classes based on you know community perception and not based on math, right? Because Astro is actually really strong right now, and I would go as far as to say that in its current iteration, it is stronger than White Mage in Midas. I think Astro Scholar is better than White Mage Scholar in for the majority of Midas, particularly 7 and 8. And we talked about this yesterday, actually, when we were just chilling in Mumble last night, but... What if Astro in this iteration was in Gordius? How good would that be compared to White Mage? Well, you know, yeah, I, I think it'd be Astro would be really, really strong in A7, first of all. Um, oh, sorry, A, not A7, A3 uh, against uh, Pepsi Man. Uh, you know, you have Disable for every single Cascade, and, and you have Bubble. 
uh, DPS checks. You know, you can you can save a card for DPS checks, uh, stuff like that, right? Um, I don't know. I feel Astro's really good, but I think buffing... like maybe Sorry. what they're trying to say. Yeah, I'm just thinking why they would do it. All right, you're right. You're you're a really good Astro. I mean, you show it off, and it becomes like an awesome job. But there's so many people who can't tackle it. Um, and so what some developers do this, they'll make a new job or new class just overpowered at first and make everybody use it. Then people will start to play it. Then they'll start to uh, bring everything back to level afterwards, which is a crappy tactic. But in this situation, how could they get, like you said, Astro's in a good spot right now, but how could they get people actually wanting to play it and not complain about it? Right. Yeah, fair enough. And I think... I think cards, I think they're going the right direction in, in changing cards, and I'm glad that they're kind of um, diagnosing the right problems with Astro, is cards, when people think of Astro, they think of cards, but cards actually kind of suck, because if you do cards perfectly, and if, if you're really good at doing cards, it's it's like the same benefit as a trick attack on on Ninja, no joke. I mean, if if I had 100% uptime on AoE balance, that's a 5% buff to the raid. But I'm not getting 100%. It's probably more like 20 to 30%. So if you if you crunch the numbers, Astral, all of Astral's cards is roughly equivalent to a Ninja's Trick Attack or a, a Machinist's Hypercharge. Now, I don't know if you played Astral before, but doing cards is a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work. Trick Attack. You fucking... <laughs> Stand behind the boss. You click, you press this button, and it's and you're done. Just you're done. Whoa, whoa, man! Hypercharge, you can bunny you know, hat. You, oh, oh, yeah. hey, fair enough, but <laughs> you know. And so cards right now they're broken. They're not they're not very good, and they're really hard to do. So, I the the fact that they're they're going, you know, they're overhauling cards is they're taking a step in the right direction. The other problem is diurnal sect, and they said that they're buffing shields, and I'm not sure if that's the right answer. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but um, I, I, what I'm worried about actually is that if they buff Astro too much, they'll push them ahead of White Mage, and all it's going to do is it's going to make White Mage obsolete, or it's going to make White, White Mage, Mage is just going to turn undesirable. into Paladin. Yeah, White Mage is going to turn into Paladin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, White Mage is going to be played best. by people who who aren't good at Astro, and but but they're mathematically worse. You know, scholar yeah. is that that big elephant in the room. You, you're not going to get rid of the scholar. Do you think they're they they uh, they decided to fix Astro first over Paladin just because no like, well, I'm not going to say nobody, but there's a lot less people that play Astro yeah. than there is Paladin. Yes, I'm 100% yeah, sure of that. Hundred percent sure. Yeah, it's all about the communities, so uh, the, like the community's perception. People think Astro sucks. They're wrong. Um. I do I, agree I, I that there's too wrong. much RNG that's involved in the cards and that they really need to condense that RNG. Uh, so you could get, like, you don't want a dead card. Getting a dead card sucks. Uh, it's hard to deal with that in the middle of a raid when you're like, all right, well, am I going to be more useful this raid than last raid? So I wish they could just condense it to somehow still make every card worthwhile in some sort of respect. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you play League of Legends, but there's a character not named uh, Twisted Fate, and uh, he has cards too, and how he works is you activate your card, and it cycles through three possible cards, and then you press it again, and it stops on that card, so that's the card that you get. I don't know, maybe they could work something like that. League of Legends, in... you don't sound like a League of Legends player, Bach. Like, uh... you didn't, like, I don't see any toxicity just like spewing out of your mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love that game. Uh, I've never. I've actually tried to play it, and I was like, "This game's really ugly," and I just played something else. Yeah, it's pretty ugly. Also, I'm pretty toxic. I've been chat banned for saying "GG easy" after after wins, so I'm pretty toxic actually. <laughs> well, um, in a game, yeah, I, I can see being pretty toxic. I guess. <laughs> oh God. Same bit. Uh, I was gonna say, I would. I would agree. Oh, um, I know my my group for my disposition. We uh, we specifically chose Astro over White Mage for our progression because we thought they were stronger than White Mage for Midas. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. And I just think would agree with you. I think, yeah, yeah. Same, same here. I mean, I pe people people f think that I'm I'm an Astro guy. I mean, I guess on on Reddit, I'm a big uh, I'm pretty gung ho on Astro. But 
It's not just it's not because Astro is my favorite. I I just played I play Astro because it's I think it's good. I Don't think lie. it's just better than White Mage. It's your favorite. Yeah, like, <laughs> it, it, it's grown on, it's grown on me, but like um. If White Mage was stronger, I would be playing White Mage. I'm not. I'm not like you know a, a blind, you know Astral fanboy. I just. I just think it's straight up mathematically better than White Mage. Yeah. I think it's definitely better than a seven and a eight. I just think. Yeah, that, it's, it's I think the mitigation yeah. is really, really important, man. Man, it's funny you guys are saying a lot of this stuff, and I'm going to be running Paladin, Monk, and uh, Dragoon. And uh, what else am I running? I'm running probably Astro Scholar. So I'm running a pretty suboptimal comp in comparison to what you guys are talking what, about. What was your comp again? What was the first three? The, uh, so my new comp that I'll be running is uh, Paladin, Warrior, and then uh, Scholar, Astro, maybe White Mage. It depends on what curve feels is best for the fight, I think. Um, and then we're going to have Monk, Dragoon, Bard, and uh, Black Mage. I mean that's not. A, I mean that that comp's fine. That's I, very I mean, similar yeah. to my last static, and my last static did pretty well. Like we were very happy with that team comp, even though it wasn't optimal. Like you know, I mean the thing is, when we when we talk about optimal, I guess it's like it's optimal for what you're like if you're trying to push fast or you know get get really early kills with really like DPS optimal. gear. Yeah, um, I mean that that comp is perfectly fine. Um, it's not a comp that my group would would run unless the fight required us to run that comp, you know. Um, just because we're going for you know hardcore progression, we want to clear as fast as possible. So we're going to go with what's mathematically you know optimal. But so I guess that brings up a pretty good point uh, as well. If do you guys feel that there are any comps right now that are just horrible and like they pretty much have a very low chance of clearing? Unless if they're all like perfect and somehow just making it a two months into the expand or the patch. Uh, Paladin Dark Knight. Don't do eight <laughs> eight without a scholar. It's, Paladin it's, it's, Dark Knight. Yeah. I want everyone on the chat right now to take me up on this challenge. Do do serious early prog with Paladin Dark Knight. Prove me wrong. No, no, do, do wrong. Let's go. Dark let's go. Go. Let's let's go. Let's fucking go. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Ain't gonna happen. With like a bunk ass team comp. Like I'm talking Dark Knight Paladin. White Mage well, Astro. I'm not even joking. Well, here's the thing. If just, you just wanted a, to do White Mage, if you want to do White Mage Astro, you have to run a Paladin for Veil. You're not going to survive with White Mage Astro otherwise. Like, you'd, you'd actually have to run that terrible cool. comp, probably. Good thing, good thing we have it. Yeah, we don't have yeah. Storm's Path either, so... Yeah, yeah, like, you need that mitigation that Veil would bring. You probably need Monk for Mantra as well, just to buff the okay. shielding more. Like, it would be interesting. No, here we go, Pat. Paladin, okay, Paladin, Dark Knight, Summoner, White Mage, Astro, Monk, Dragoon Bard. Wait, is that eight? That's eight. There we go. Make that call. Oh, man. Make it happen. Oh. Make it happen. That the funny thing is, that wouldn't be too. the worst Ugh. comp in the world, and I still think it would clear. It just wouldn't be, it would be maybe 500 DPS at least group overall I mean, less, right? I, I imagine if if we were to make a comp like that, we could probably clear. But we'd You're be carry, trying really hard. We, we're, you know, we're all BIS for. You know for how you could so. clear with that group, though. With that group comp, here's how you clear with that group. Uh, you put in an application to SE, get hired on their development team, use the invulnerable <laughs> status. Yeah, so that's how god, you kill like, it. Get god mode. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Here we go. We're back to bully. We're getting back there. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. I think Summoner could do really well. Uh, I've seen so I, many I good Summoners is, out there. Yeah, I think Summoner's okay. Um, I, I don't have a problem with like this Summoner Black Mage comparison. They're both they're both good. Um, Black Mage is a bit more single target, I think. But um, um, we, we've yeah. done fights with both. I, I think those those two classes are probably the more balanced of all of the the same role I don't, jobs. I don't <laughs> like Crap, Summoner because it's done. bully because it's bully in A six and. Fuck oh, Ed, go yeah, summoner. it's the worst. Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> so, so summoner in six is, is very good. I'll look at that. Yeah, that is true. But you know, going back to the the astro buffs uh, that are um, kind of on the horizon here, um, they said that they're buffing shields. I'm not sure if that's the right answer. I mean, I get it. I get that. I get that their intent, their intended design was for 
you know, if you're going to go White Mage Astro, then the Astro is going to be a Nocturnal Sect and it's going to give shields. But that's not what makes Scholar OP. It's part of what makes Scholar OP. I mean, you also have a fairy that can AoE heal your whole party for free while you're still in Cleric Stance without ever exiting Cleric Stance. Like, it's, it's nuts. The kind I mean, of what, shit that Scholar can do. What there. would you recommend, though? I mean, what would you do to make what a White recommend? Mage Astro comp work? Why can't you change sex in combat? It makes no sense to me that you can't. I wouldn't be really that OP if you could. I I mean, I, it took me a second to realize you meant S E C T S, and like I was wondering why you were, were oh having this conversation here. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it would be OP at all. Because okay, okay, l l let's 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 think this through here. With, first of all, would that make Astro Scholar that much stronger? I don't think it would because you can't stack those shields anyway. Yeah, when would I, I ever really go into Nocturnal Sect when I have an Astro, or, uh, sorry, a Scholar in the party who can just shield everybody that I was going to shield anyway? So now you know it's 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 kind of like you know redundant to have a second shielder. So I'm going to be spending most of the time in Diurnal Sect anyway. Now, so so there's that. But so how would that change White Mage Astro? Um, well, first of all, when I when we don't need shields, I can be in di diurnal sect and we have two hots running because hots stack. That that is that could be really beneficial actually if you think about it. Um, having two regens on a tank and just going ham on DPS, right? I mean, it's extremely efficient. AOE healing. I mean, I'm totally okay with losing uh, Whispering Dawn. If we could have Medica 2 and Aspect of Helios running at the same time. And guess what? The boss is going to J kick. Hey, I'm going to disable, put up a shield, put shields up in the party, and collective unconscious. We're perfectly fine. So, uh, with that being said, I think that's the best fix. And it also makes the class more fun. And, you know, you're. you're I don't know. I think that, that'd be a better fix because, you know. Buff, you can buff shields all you want. You just keep buffing shields, and, you know, you're still not going to bring Astro to the same level as a scholar yeah like that that would make a really like that would well not completely change the class but that would make the class like way more fun to play is if you could switch your stances yeah. in combat like that's one reason why warrior is so fun is because it feels so fluid to just go from defiance to deliverance or vice versa you know so if you could do something similar like that on astro I think that would be fucking amazing. You know, it, it would bring more like like depth to the class. If you know what I'm saying, like it, it would it would just make it like really really cool. And you don't think that's going to be managing too much though, because but all right now you're managing switching the stances uh, uh, between cleric and not being a cleric, knocked and dinoral and doing cards. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right. Yet at the same time, I mean, I My, still think scholar is more. Scholar is still more work, I think, to manage everything efficiently. Like my my mentality, like I'm an elitist bully. Like my mentality is get good, right? Get good. So, yep. get so good. like I think that if I don't believe in, oh well, that's too much to manage. I look at it as a challenge. Like I look at it as, oh, I need to fucking get good, you know, or yeah, I'm gonna exactly. fucking suck, and and it's gonna be obvious, right? So I think that the more intricate a class is. Now, this goes completely against everything they're doing because they're dumbing everything down and it's yeah. whatever. You know, it feels bad, man. It's whatever. But my mentality is is if you are really good at this game, you should be, like, severely rewarded for it. And I think yeah. that uh -huh. the, the intricacies of a class, you should be able to master them and be, like, leaps and bounds ahead of other people because you're just simply better. You know what I mean? Like That's one of my favorite things about this game is is the 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 depth of each and every class. I love learning new jobs. I love Yeah, I do know, too. How do I how do I get, you know, really good at Dragoon? I mean I know how to press the buttons. I know what these I know how how combos works. You know, this this shit lights up, I press that button, right? But uh, like if they if they took away from that depth, I think it would take a lot away from the game for me as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess that kind of comes back to the whole point of, all right, well, who are we catering this game towards? Um, and also, what if you're not really good at this game, what do you do? Uh, is there any content? Like, if you make it to where you have to be good at this game and fights are hard, but there's no other content out there for anyone else, it kind of makes it rough. So they probably have more they have to work on with their content than uh, class design, I would say. 
Yeah. But uh you know, I I'm I'm glad that they're fixing cards because it's not so much that Astro itself needs buffs, but that's the you know, the 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 classes um defining mechanic is cards. I mean, our freaking job icon is our freaking card. It's it's two cards, right? So and and cards is is really underwhelming, so I'm glad that they're fixing that, but yeah, at the same time, I don't necessarily think Astro is the squeakiest wheel, and I don't think that buffing shields is the answer to making White Mage plus Astro uh, viable. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but we'll see. So, actually, uh, okay, so, like, kind of branching off in, into what, like, we were just talking about now. So, with the Astro changes, like, this will actually take us into our next topic. What, um, like... Like as a player in a static, uh, how do you prepare for three point four? So, like, as a healer, um, if you did not have astro leveled, so let's say you were strictly white mage. I, you know, I love white mage. I hate astro. But you heard about this change, right? So you're like, oh fuck. Well, maybe they're gonna be, uh, uh, you know, maybe they're gonna be like op as shit, right? So. So like as a player, like what like what steps do you take? Um, I mean to like prepare pretty, yourself for that. Pretty much, they would have to level up Astro, right? Uh, I would think anyone who's behind it, it depends on the level you are playing. At. We're talking about the level of get good player, right? How do you get good? How do you get better? Not the hey, I'm playing a game just for fun. If you want to be, you know, I think this I think this topic should be more all encompassing because we all play this game at different levels of intensity so you know we're, we're i guess that this this podcast isn't necessarily just targeted towards you know yeah the hard uber raiders players, no yeah. not at all it's just about rating in general but yeah you're you're right um i guess yeah i bring it in like the casual levels, talk you know. here okay uh, yeah so i guess from a casual point of view you should have just uh, if you like white mage, level up another healer just so you understand how it works. You don't have to play it, but if you could level up other healers just to burn time right now, uh, then do it. And maybe make sure you have a raid group going, and you're not you know scrambling to get a raid group as soon as the uh, patch comes out. Um, I and I guess that's what we're talking about too: is someone who's not in a raid or someone who is in a raid. Uh, yes. someone who is, yeah, like so, someone okay, who is, in yeah, okay, like, sure. like so, so, um, so, like for instance, okay, like I'm, I'm actually on, well, two ends of the spectrum or whatever. I like I raid mid core hours, like with with Bach, uh, and Doc and Chet. Like we we are we're all pr like really skilled players, but we don't do hardcore hours just simply because that's just never been what our group's been about, and that's fine. Um, but in my other group, like, I have more time than some of the other people in the group. So I have a lot more time. So uh, I am also in a hardcore group and, uh, that's on Phoenix. Um, and I told, uh, I told um, my Phoenix group, I said, on my character that I, that I have over there, I have Warrior and I have Dark Knight leveled. I have a Gladiator that's leveled to 34, and I told them that I have no intention of ever hitting 50 or 60 or whatever and getting like, I don't even know how Paladin Jobstone. <laughs> so but I told them that I'm never going to play Paladin. However, however, if, so let's swap those changes and let's say that they said, oh, we're changing Paladin drastically. I would be leveling Paladin because uh, depending on the change, uh, like I said, Paladin Dark Knight, or Paladin Warrior might be better, or equally as good, or whatever. So, like, like what I'm doing uh, uh, to prepare for this, whatever, I'm doing, like, cell runs, I'm getting money, I'm getting ready to get shit crafted, I'm buying food, you know, uh, like, I'm doing stuff like that. And if they were to change Paladin, I would be leveling it right now, but that's not the case, so, so I'm not leveling it. But uh, one day, I might level it, but that's, like... That's pretty yeah, so like that's pretty much what I'm doing uh, for Prague. Um, I'm also doing like SR runs, like speed runs, uh, and I think speed runs are are important, but not 
but not for the EPIN actually. I think speedruns are important because they force you they force you out of your comfort zone, they force you to play risky, and they force you to come up with new strategies that would otherwise be crazy. Or it or like during Prague would, would just be way too risky. And I like that aspect. So I think that uh basically keeping uh your Prague mentality uh, before Prague is actually here is a really good thing. And if other people aren't doing that, um, I would recommend uh, <laughs> doing some terror or attempting SRs or something like that. Just basically to get your Prague mentality back in gear because, fuck, it's been in hibernation for like, what, half a year? You know what I'm saying? So like, I mean, I don't know about other people, but sometimes if I don't, like, keep up to date with that kind of stuff, like, if I don't, like, you know, practice that kind of stuff, I get rusty. So th those are the things that I'm doing for 3.4, like, in preparation or whatever. I wish we did that as a static. I mean, we wish we did more shit as a static, but we got raid loggers and we got people who just don't. Yeah, it's they're just not into it. So it's, it's, hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to expect that from people. And, you know... Back to the thing like where if you're gonna be playing multiple jobs or like you know job switching, I don't think I don't think people should um, should have to change from playing the job that they want to play just because it's it's stronger. Like like you know to, to some extent like my, my situation, I I had to switch from warrior to astral because of you know circumstances, right? And I was willing to do that, but. Let's just suppose I was a white mage and you guys were like, yo, Astro is going to be really strong. We want you to go Astro. I, 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 I'm not sure how to feel about that. You know, I, I, think, I think to ask that of a player is a lot, is, is, is too much to ask of a, of a player, even at a hardcore level. Like even at a hardcore level, people don't do that. And, you know, they, they try to get the best team comp, but like, um, I don't know, just saying, hey, I need you to be able to play both of these jobs. It's, you know, no, that's know. that's pretty rough. And I mean, most people who are playing this game, they you know love up a white mage. I want to play a white mage. I want to go out there and I want to play this job and be the best at it. Not mm -hmm. hey, this isn't ju this is slightly worse than this other job, so I have to stop playing it. I am completely mm -hmm. against that. Yeah, mainly I agree. because I'm this is you. a game. Now I'll I'll jump the gun also on this statement and also say if you are in world progression or really hardcore progression and your focus is to do 100% the best and to clear uh, as fast as possible you do have to accept usually that means that you have yes. to expand and do other yeah. jobs and classes right yeah fair fair enough yeah i, I uh, think for that I was about very to say top that. level like, yeah yeah, yeah we, we expect people you have to, to play um, okay. other jobs in their role i would expect like right you know if, if if white mage is really good you know ask for a white mage would be expected mm -hmm. or like uh Summoner, summoner, black mage, or like I, I can play all three melee, not as well as ninja, but you know I could pick them up at a progression level if required. Yeah, um, but but if you had to, you're willing, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. See, if so, I was unwilling to to switch to if if I wanted to go white mage and I was unwilling to switch to astral, I think my static would they would they wouldn't give me shit about it, right? No, nah, I, I mean I wouldn't. Like, th like the group that like the group we're in is it? I don't know. It, it's it's extremely unique. Because uh, I, I mean, I've been in a lot of groups, uh, especially well with with my second character, and our group is e extremely unique in the fact that we have fun and play what we want, but we're also really good at the fucking game, and typically, a s slight class advantages don't matter very much when it comes to like what we do. Um, the closest that the closest kind of uh, feeling I guess that that I had uh, similar to that was when in my Leviathan group uh, when we were progging um, in Midas uh, me and Perez we just said fuck it we're going double warrior just fuck it just total fucking man mode just fuck it you know and we killed eight hella early like we killed eight super early and I mean we didn't use I mean like we didn't use tank LB for for a8 but like just j just the fact that me and him were just like, yo, fuck this shit, double warrior. Like that, it, it reminded me of our group. And it reminded me of our group and just how you know we're just kind of like carefree, like we don't even care, just fuck it, you know. Like yeah. I, I I think that that's a really really uh, it's a really cool uh, feeling to be a part of something like that. I think.
Mm-hmm. But I guess to, to to steer back on topic, as like I have I have been actively practicing white mate white mage not as much as I want to be. I, I don't know. I I kind of I kind of think that I'd be playing Astro a lot more in come in the next the next patch. But in any case, um, that that's kind of one thing I've been doing. But I, I guess you know to to prepare for three point four progression, um, for a typical raid group. I think crafted gear is going to be pretty important, and it oh, gives you yeah. kind of a, a kickstart. So, having gill is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, having a crafter who is going to craft the shit for you is a big deal, and you know, I'm sure crafters are looking for raiders, so they want to find you too. So, you know, you should have a crafter lined up, ready to make gear for you when you need it. Uh, that's that's kind of how I've prepared. Um, but aside from that, I mean, that's fu- like one of the best things I, I think a player can do to get better at this game is to learn another job, specifically learn another role. And I'm, when I say learn, I don't mean get it to 60 and like, you know, do some dungeons. Do dungeon, I mean, yeah. really learn the class, because when you do that, it makes you better at your own class and it makes you better at accommodating your teammates. Um, I think one advantage that I have as a healer is that I've played tanks so much. I know what tanks go through. I know what tanks think about. And I know how they plan out their cooldowns. Um, You and I play very similarly when we played Warrior. We played very similarly ever since 2.1. So I know how you play. And and that helps a lot. Um, But honestly, from a healer perspective, okay, I play a lot of DPS. And I think until you've played DPS... And until you've been, learned how to be greedy on DPS, you don't really truly value every single GCD as much as you, as you know, a healer who only plays healer. So you're going to be running around, not casting any spells for a while, and you're okay with it. Whereas, you know, when when I when I play Dragoon, right? If I haven't, if I drop a GCD because you know I was too spent too much time away from a tar- uh, like an enemy target it feels bad I'm just like shit I just lost a lot of damage there and that starts to seep over to when I play healer I'm just like man I could have just totally went into clerics and hit two malefics and then hop back out for the next heal right and and I don't think I would be in that mindset if I didn't play DPS if I didn't try to learn how to play DPS at a high level and same thing with tanks you know I, I don't want tanks I have to go through how they pop their cooldowns, how they plan their cooldowns, and uh, and stuff like that. So, I don't I know. You've been playing a lot of healer. You've been playing a lot of healer lately, Zeno. And oh yeah, man, it's fucking that, has awesome. Has it changed the way that you've tanked at all? Uh, or it, given you any more insight as to what a healer's thinking about when you're playing, right? Uh, yeah, like it has for sure. Like it's it's obviously helped me more on healer. Like okay, so there's like this running meme, man, where I'm like a shit healer on my scholar, and and I might not be the best, but I'm <laughs> like over the past like month and a half, I, I'm I've gotten pretty confident on like healing now, and um, I think I'm a pretty I, I think I'm a pretty decent healer, uh, but. A lot of that has came from the fact that I tank, because like, uh, whenever I I try really hard to not overheal, uh, and I try to base everything around the damage that like the tank is tanking, and I'll always mm-hmm. prioritize healing first. But um, like, it definitely has helped a lot because I notice um, that. Healers can do so much damage because there there's a lot of times throughout the fight where you're literally if you're not casting uh, a stone three you know then you're just standing there with dick in hand and it's like mm-hmm. I don't see how like if you look at flogs right I'm pretty sure that like you and Chet were talking to me about it and like the first a six kill I got I was like like. 62nd percentile or something on damage yeah, yeah on, on on damage as a white mage and it's just and like i wasn't even trying to do damage that was the thing but i i i, I casted some dps spells here and there and uh i think that yeah like because because i came from a tank it helps so much and totally yeah like now now when i now when i'm on a tank 
I think about the way the party or I could could be healed, like the way it it, it could be done, like uh, like instead of you know like what you were saying, like try to replace you know a cure two with a tetra in a region sometimes, yeah, you know shit like that. Like I like I'll think about different ways to actually heal on different parts of the fight as opposed to just oh just heal this like. It doesn't matter how you heal it; just heal it. You know, there's there's definitely a, a very fine art to the way that you should heal, and it's mm-hmm. really cool that that like, uh, yeah, going to yeah. A healer. Like I started to think about that. You know, so yeah. So I, I guess I guess my answer is like uh, might might be a little late now, but to to all healers out there, if you have extra if you have extra time, if you really want to get good at healing, one of the best things you could do get really good at tanking, get really good at DPSing, because that will make you a lot better at your healing job. Yeah, uh, it, it sounds like a lot of work because it is a lot of work. But hey, you, you know, you in in game and in life, you you only get what you give, right? So there you are. I mean, I can kind of respect that a lot. Uh, when I first started raiding, I did warrior it was my, the first tank that I did. Then Best the next decision year, of your life. It was good, man. I was sad <laughs> when I, I had to switch to paladin though because we had to get another player to tank for us, and they could only play warrior. So I was like, all right, well, I'll do paladin. So next year, I do paladin. So it was. Uh, T9 was uh, Warrior, T13 was Paladin, and now Machinist came out. Fucking yeah, Machinist is awesome. It sounds great. Get robots and stuff. So I played uh, Machinist that next tier. Uh, Midas was Scholar. Now I'm going back to uh, Paladin with like every perspective that I can get with uh, a fight. Or every major role, not every perspective, but every major role. Uh, I think it's going to help me out a lot. Bandy, you've been quiet. Yeah. Yeah, you play well, you like every talk. role, man. <laughs> yeah, Bandy plays every role too. Yeah, I play everything. I see. I, I initially started playing as a white mage, uh, leveled warrior second. It's been my off spec since 2.0. In love warrior. Um, but yeah, I've made healer, ranged, melee. I haven't main tank, but I've cleared all content while it's current as a tank. You know, I, I pretty much just. I, I try and push myself to play everything um, because I know the more perspectives you have is always going to help you. So. Yeah, you know. and I guess if I was going to add one more note to all this too, I'm, I'm sorry to go back on it. Uh, back when we were talking about uh, how to prepare for this next uh, pat of rating, make sure that you understand what you're wanting to get out of the match with your group. Um, if you're going in there expecting to go really hard and crazy and then you have people in your group that you played with their friends and they're coming in and they're kind of lazy sometimes they don't show up uh, and they just want to kind of have fun and mess around you're going to have a really bad tier so make sure your priorities and the rest of your group's priorities are still the same as they were last tier absolutely uh, also make sure you have consumables they, they are very important good in potions yeah pots, food, big thing weakness like I, buff uh, Weakness buff is is so much better than the food buff. People don't realize this. <laughs> Why don't more people for, realize for, this? For, progr- for, for early progression, definitely. Because um, you're you're going to raise people and you're going to keep going to see more of the fight and get more experience. So, food buff is well, it only it only saves you money. The yeah, only exactly. the only buff the only uh, FC buff that actually makes you stronger in raid is back on your feet. And it's funny yeah. because I see it all the time in raids. Uh, you know, it's, it's like in FC chat, hey, can we get the food buff? It's like, don't you also want this? Like, yeah, sure, we'll take that too. You know? It's like, yeah, this should be the other way around, I mean, man. Back on your feet's the good one. That That's why there's no level three of it, right? Because they'd be too broken. If yeah. They... I, oh, I back to what I said about learning other jobs. I also think it's important for the raid leader to understand their perspective from, from all jobs too, is because when you come up with a strategy, I played. I, I I help a lot a lot of groups like, um, you know, just like one chest runs or just prog runs and stuff, right? And a lot of strategies we run um, ignores a lot of the, the like it makes it makes shit really hard on the healers. And it's and it's just like, you know, if if you don't know how what it's like playing a healer, then your strategy is gonna it can totally screw your healer. And maybe your healer just, you know, they're they're, they're gonna say okay, yeah, sure, we could do it that way. And then sometimes I'll I'll, I'll come in. Um, help out a group, and it's just like, wow, I can't reach anybody with heals. Why is this strategy so 
aids for yeah. you know healer range it just totally ignores healer range and well it's because the person who made the strategy is a dps and he doesn't play healer and doesn't realize that hey my helios only goes so far guys <laughs> i can only hit four people with this helios right now it's, it's the same as a melee you know you can tell when a strat's been designed by a rage exactly melee have no uptime if you know like, yeah. I need to hit the boss. If like. you know how to consider all three roles, DPS, melee, healer, your strategies are just going to be so much better. Yeah. That, you know, actually that point that you just made, uh, you know, that, that dips into the next topic, man. Nice. Uh, what, okay, so, so just like branching off what you said, what advice do you have for players who will be taking the plunge in the savage raiding scene for the first time? And I think that what you said, like, uh, so if if you are a raid leader or, or you know, if you're in a group with a raid leader, I think it is very important for that person or just the group in general. Because I, the groups I'm in, we don't have raid leaders because uh, I'm just very opinionated. So I, yeah, it doesn't really work out for me. But uh, some groups do have raid leaders. Uh, and... If they, if the group does, I, th I think it is very important for that person when, when they're suggesting a strategy or when they're implementing a strategy, the strategy should be based on the the benefits of all three roles: tank, DPS, and healer. So, you shouldn't implement a strategy that completely fucks over one just because it's you know slightly itty bitty easier. You know, you should try to pick the strategy that is best for all three roles because, accommodates everybody yeah because yeah. in the end like if you do it that way you're not losing anything whereas like let's say you have a strat that really accommodates the healers but completely fucks dps that will matter later in the fight that will matter when that happens because dps is going to be a lot lower you're making it harder on yourself like that's that's what a lot of like um, like because I help a lot of raid teams too, and one of the common uh, common things I'll see is that the raid team will overcompensate for one reason or another, and I don't think that's the best way to approach it. I think the best way to approach it is to look at all three different roles, pick the strategy that benefits all three the most. Because in the end, you're, th that will make the fight easier. Because your DPS will be higher. You won't have to heal as much. Like, you won't be taking as much incoming damage. Like, there's so many benefits. And uh, I think, like, that maybe that stems from the fact that people are just afraid to wipe. They're afraid to die in Prague. They're afraid to wipe. And I, I, I never c quite understood that. Because, like, when you wipe, learning is a part of the game <laughs> like whenever you wipe and you completely fuck up like in in a8 i literally killed everybody while trying to move the boss it shit happens i felt terrible you know but it happens and i learn and now i'm fucking awesome at moving the boss and that's because you know you I, made, I learned you made it, that, you know? that yeah. mistake yeah. and that mistake made you better yeah exactly yeah. and i don't think yeah. that enough raid groups understand that your mistakes as long as you learn from them they're they're, they're the most they're, important. Yeah. yeah it's like, like the most important it's extremely productive and yeah. i think that if you're jumping into the raid scene or you're interested in the raid scene one of the best pieces of advice that i personally could give is don't be like don't be afraid to wipe it's going to happen it doesn't matter That's how really safe good you advice. play like it doesn't matter how safe you play. You're gonna die. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter if you're full time uh, tank stance spamming heals on the tank. You're still gonna die because yeah. you're learning. You don't know what the fuck you're doing yet. You know. Um, yeah, and the biggest thing as well is you're gonna wipe, but learn learn from the wipes and then like work on and like find out what went wrong, think of a solution for it, and move on. You know, um, whatever the solution may be. Uh, it depends on the fight, but yeah, you just have to learn from mistakes because you will make mistakes. We all do. Like, God, I've wiped my group many a time. Everyone in my group's wiped my group many a time, you know, from tabbing out at, at bad times and they learned not to tab out at that point of the fight again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I definitely don't have a 100% success rate on um, monkey driving in 85, that's for sure. Yeah. I remember one time we were talking, uh, Bach, and you mentioned that 
you brought up something really, uh, really important, I think, and that was um, so your mentality of going into Prague is Prague is about taking risks. Like it's to some it's, extent, yeah. yeah it's okay to take like it's not okay to go crazy, obviously, but it's okay to take risks. And I think that like I think that was a really good point, and I think I I don't think enough people. Uh, I don't think enough people have that mentality um, as well. And I think it's a really good mentality to have. Because yeah, yeah. I, I think like you don't want to overdo it and you don't want to get greedy to a point where it hinders your group's progress. But yet at the same time, you can't play scared. You can't be, I, I think, I think like you, you, you really put it best when you, when you said you can't be afraid to wipe. Um, no. One one thing I guess one really good piece of advice that I could give to to people who um, like so suppose you have never raided before and maybe you did some nidhog and you're just like this is a lot of fun I think I want to you know I I've already put my foot in the water I want to try something harder now and I think I could do it you know and maybe you join a static or you're about to join a static um, but you really don't know what kind of mindset you, you should be in and it's it could be really intimidating. But I think, kind of to echo what Zeno said, is one of the biggest things you could do is just understand that you are meant to fail repeatedly. Like, like people say that this game is unforgiving, right? It's just like, oh, one person makes a mistake, everyone dies. This game's so unforgiving. This game is actually really, really forgiving. You have an infinite number of do-overs, right? You die, you pick yourself back up and you do it again. You have an infinite number of lives. That is pretty damn forgiving. So just accept the fact that you're going to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Learn from your mistakes and just don't overthink it. I think uh, one big barrier to raiding is people people are afraid that if I let the group down, they're going to kick me and it's going to feel really bad. I don't want to go through that, so I'm just not going to raid. That's a lot of pressure that I don't want to put myself through. But seriously, just have fun with it. You you're, you're going to fail. You're gonna learn something. You're gonna get better at it, and eventually, the more you fail when you beat it, it just feels that much better. It's just that much more satisfying. You know, I gotta um, say, this whole like uh, cast so far has been a lot more serious than I was expecting it to be. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I could throw, like, some, so, like, oh, oh, throw some some baby and rage and shit. I um, I was, I was gonna say as well. Let me uh, put the big head on back. If you're looking to get into raiding as well. I'll put the baby um, rage over. Be prepared. Over like, frosty. Uh, there we go. You know, like uh, pu punctuality is the best way to make a good impression as well. I'll always be, you know, be early for what your static decides. If you're new, H have a couple, have some food, have some potions, and all this things. Like, you know, just uh, <laughs> be, be be ready. Um, Maybe you know if the fight's been done a while. Look, look up a bit of information beforehand so you don't go in completely blind and stuff like that. It's all uh, that's also good advice. I mean, I mean, there's information out there. Like Zeno puts out good guides for the fights when he's cleared them a couple of times, things like that. You know, so don't don't be afraid to look up information or things like that. And don't be afraid to be vocal either. If you if you think like, don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Like if you think something stupid, say say you think it's stupid and like bring it up you know yeah i think like um uh yeah man i just think <laughs> people are just really afraid to wipe uh yeah no, they and are, definitely. it it only like when you die in a fight uh it's really only an issue if one no one takes responsibility like obviously you wipe somebody fucked up you know it's it, it shouldn't be about like a like a blame game it shouldn't be about that it should just be the person should just say, yo, I fucked up, my bad, I'm trash at the game, I hope this pull I'm not as bad. And then that should be it. Just drop it. Just just squash it. You know what I mean? Just that it's yeah. just that, you know, mm -hmm. should should that should be it. But the issue comes in, I think, or at least at least when I help other groups, like the issue comes in where it's like all this passive aggressiveness or like all this uh just 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 really negative shit that it's not like it's it's just not even needed like it it's not helping it's not helping the the progress of the of 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 the group and i just think that that like pointing fingers or placing blame it's like it's like this person already fucked up he already feels bad or they already feel bad but mm -hmm. be supportive good, you know yeah like but the good thing is they know that they fucked up 
they know that they're going to like like mm-hmm. to do to do everything they can to prevent that. And I think it only becomes an issue when the same fuck up keeps happening. Like when you're like four mm-hmm. pulls in and you're like, holy fuck, you got one shot by that shit. Use a fucking CD, you know. And then you have to be blunt, you know. Then then you got to put on the bully pants. Yo, idiot, use a fucking CD. Uh, you died like four times. I think that you know? depends on what kind of group you're in. But I think <laughs> well, for someone the who's two just the two groups I'm in, that don't think. Uh, yeah, but, I don't know. <laughs> the two the groups I made. St- okay, well, I I think I think a big deal <laughs> is you know taking responsibility. If if you if you if you screw up and recognizing that you screwed up and you're gonna fix it, I have so, so much more um, confidence in a teammate who knows when they screwed up. When someone is like, "How's this guy supposed to fix his mistake when he doesn't even think he made a mistake?" You know? Yeah. It's just I don't want to even like play with this guy anymore. But uh, yeah. Um, like I'm like I'm really grateful that I raid with with you guys uh, because I know I know 100% that if I fuck up a tank mechanic 3 4 5 times I know 100% that Chad is going to be like yo can you not be stupid and do this right <laughs> please <laughs> And I know that Bach will say the same thing. And I know sure as fuck that Ella will say the same thing. So, well, I, <laughs> I mean... Be like, yo, can I log out and play Overwatch now? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, so, but, like, sometimes... Sometimes it's needed. Like, sometimes you just... Like, okay. sometimes a sledgehammer is the tool that you need. Okay. Uh, We're just, getting a bit off topic, by the way. We're supposed to be helping people get into raiding. Oh, yeah. right. We're talking about sledgehammers. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Back to topic. really good, too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure that, that's good. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, Go. no, just make sure that, like, if someone's going to come and people are going to get angry and people are going to get emotional and they're going to yell and say stuff. And, you know, later they're going to go, like, I don't know, walk their dog or go masturbate or something and feel better. But oh, the yeah. thing is, you, you just got to kind of get used to it. Do you like these guys? Do you hate them 100% and you're just putting up with their bullshit the entire time? Leave the group. But, I mean, at the end, you have to be able to take some sort of type of criticism if you're going to ever improve people are going to know things that you don't know even if they don't play your job sometimes they don't sometimes they're filling you with shit but you should investigate it and find out for sure absolutely yeah constructive taking constructive criticism is a huge part of being a raider is knowing knowing how to accept that you know knowing how to give it and not just constructive criticism get asshole criticism if someone says something stupid to you I mean, there, there might, there, there, I think every raid has someone who is more vocal than you would like sometimes. And yeah, we get pretty you know, heated or, sometimes too. But like, you know, we're yeah, like um, ten it's all part, later, of, the it's all part of the no? journey, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just, just precisely. shrug it off. You kind of have to have a short memory sometimes. But um, competition, you know, if you're a competitive person, and and there, there's always going to be some degree of competitiveness when you when you get into raiding, is sometimes. There's going to be a little bit of salt and some feelings are hurt. And sometimes, you know, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, preparing for that and not taking it in stride and, you know, moving on, moving forward. And yeah. Like the rewards for, like, <laughs> oh man. And I'm pretty sure everyone that has ever rated can agree with me on this. But man, when you get that first kill. Ooh, I'm talking about the first kill when it's sloppy. We're talking sloppy Joe. We're talking fucking high school Spaghetti cafeteria everywhere. sloppy Joe. But oh, you shit. kill it, right? You kill it, and you're just like, oh yeah, dog. You know, you just get fucking hype on that first kill. That feeling of that first kill. Oh man, that's, that's fucking yeah. That's some dude. gasm right there. Fucking uh, gasm. Sambosa static it. killed A8 with one warrior alive for the first time. That must be pretty damn epic. Yeah, man. Uh, that's pretty <laughs> epic. Damn. Even after I've killed a fight a whole bunch of times, if I'm trying to clear it and we're having a bad night and we still kill it just barely, like, it feels good. I don't know why, but just yeah. like that barely kill feels good every single mm-hmm. time. It, it definitely does. It's true. Well, another piece of advice, I'd say, for players who are looking to take the plunge, um, honestly... Hold yourself to a high standard. You need to be your biggest critic, and you need to be, you know, self-motivated. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of players think that they're ready for raiding, and they don't know their their classes' rotations. They don't they don't really you know they don't study the fights. They don't they don't um, 
you know, watch a video and stuff, and they're just not ready, but they think they're ready because it's like, I want to do this, so I guess I'm ready, you know? Um, I guess when I'm raiding, um, the kind of play I want to be isn't so, isn't like, you know, a lot of people like, I, I just, I just want to fit in and I just don't want to be a detriment to the group. No, man, you, you got to hold yourself to a higher standard than that. You got to be the guy that your group doesn't know what to do without you, you know? That's the kind of player that, that uh, that's what I mean when I say hold yourself to a high standard is only you can do it, right? So, you know, yeah. I, I, I see a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of players who are constantly practicing, you know, doing Nidhogg when they don't even need it just to see if they could beat their last DP, their last parse. Those are the kind of players I want to raid with, you know? Yeah, and I also like the players who don't, like, mess up five times in a raid and then, like, scream about it five times. I like them just messing up like a couple of times and just being done with it. So try to control your anger, I guess, and not try to seem like you're going to go kill yourself after the raid. That would be great too. Um, and another, I don't know why I'm so salty about this. Don't bring in like if you guys are having a you're ready for a good raid night and someone comes in and they're just like, man, uh, my life sucks because of so and so and my grandma yelled at me and all this stuff. Try not to bring that into the raid, man. I don't want it. <laughs> I was about to say, keep, keep, uh, like, try and keep personal issues out of raid. I think that's another big, big thing too, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I've, right. I've dealt with so much like dr- drama that's like ridiculous that I would never want to ever hear again. Just it's stuff that I've had an okay day, or I've had maybe even it was a rough day at work, and I was just like, man, I just want to get on it. I want to beat the fuck out of Swindler. <laughs> I want to just destroy him. Uh, and then, like, half the raid, it's just someone having emotional real-life issues. And I, I understand that sometimes raids are, like, a vent for that. But if you could vent it outside of the raid, that would be great. Like, um, yeah. so, uh, going, like, just real quick, going back to what Bach was saying, like, to hold yourself to a better, to, like, a higher standard. Um, I, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but whenever I'm, like, raiding with other people or, like, helping a group or something... Uh, especially new people, like especially new people. I have so much respect for, like I have so much respect for people that will instantly own up to their mistakes and be like, yo, that was me. I fucked up. My yeah. bad. Just, just, they just own up to it immediately. They, they say, okay, here's, here's what I fucked up. It's my bad. It won't happen again. Boom. Drop it. Just do the next poll. Like, I, I have so much respect for those people. I just have so much respect for those people, man. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree. Not That's just the biggest... in game, in real life, man. Yeah, just, 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 yeah, just, just learn to admit when you make a mistake. We, everyone makes a mistake, just admit it. Yep. But yeah, your teammates will have are... so much more confidence in you if you yourself can realize when you made a mistake. Because if you don't, yep. yeah. how do they know that you're going to fix it if you don't think you made a mistake? If I have exactly. to ACT detective to, to find out what you did wrong then, you know, when you yourself knew all along, then, I don't know. You know, just don't be awkward and weird about it. That's all I'm asking, man. Yeah. Yo, so, so, uh, actually, talking about, like, owning up to your mistakes, you know, that kind of stuff, that, uh, that brings us into our next topic, actually, uh, conveniently. Uh, what goals or standards do you hold your A group to? How do you hold each other accountable? Ooh, that's a heavy ass topic. Heavy, heavy. Oh, this topic. is a heavy one. So, and this uh, is going to be different for it's every a one of us. Topic too. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this is going to be different for all of us too. So, so Frosty, you want to you want to take yeah. this first, man? You go yeah. first. All right. Sure. All right. So standards, uh, I hold them up to. Um, try to keep a good internet connection. That's wow. number one. All right, hey, that's a that that's an excellent standard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, manage your problems with internet. Try to fix your issues. Uh, understand your job. Make sure that I'm not tr- telling you how to teach or teaching you how to do your job every single fight. Although I'm probably going to try to figure it out anyways, uh, just so I can make sure that you're doing it right. Um, God, yeah, I think, I, I, honestly, internet's the like, biggest thing. Coming, being active, and showing that you want to clear the fight, and you're not coming into the, the raid every single night, kind of, oh, well, I really don't want to be here. I'm just here because I feel like i got to be here. Come with some energy. 
Uh, that's that's kind of a standard that I have for with the group. And if you guys, if you're dragging down the entire group's attitude, then it's it's really not you're not good for the group. That's my biggest one. Do should I pick more? I got so many. But <laughs> hey, man, you can, dude. You can go as long as you want to go. Oh baby. shit. <laughs> All right. Cut, or so, we can kiss. Okay, sure. Go ahead. No. Okay, cut me off. It's go. Okay. No. Go. 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 All right. All right. I was gonna say also, you know, come into the party uh, with proper glamour. <laughs> don't don't come in looking like <laughs> a piece important. of trash, right? Yeah. No. No. That's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whatever you say, Band. Yeah. You're like the ugliest character I've ever seen. Whoa. Oh my god, fucking bully! Uh, which which, which Whoa. Is glamorous is Whoa. Like, yeah, like neon green glow. No, no, no. Like my, my alt glamour, my alt glamour is on point. I've got a, like a pink hat, a honey yellow chest piece. Okay. Fucking, well, you don't meet no. the standards to to being in Frosty's static, apparently. Your glamour yeah. looks like a unicorn ate a pound of Skittles and shit it out. That's what yeah, your glamour man, it's, looks it's like. Uh, I'll, I'll link a picture in the stream when we get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like if I go over a lot of this stuff, I'll just be overlapping you guys, so I'll let you guys go with it. All right, Bandio, what about you? You're the opposite side of the spectrum. You're like the uber hardcore. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we hold ourselves and each other to like the highest standards. Um, because we, we expect, you know, top, top players. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin, really. Um, I mean, we're, we're at the point where, you know, Frosty was saying he's worried that people would uh, come in not knowing how to play your job and all that. We, we kind of expect people to be able to handle all of their own stuff themselves. Um, if we feel like we have to baby anyone, then they're not really in the group. We expect everyone to be able to stand like their own two feet and be the master of what they're playing at the time, you know? Um, and, I mean, you know, they said the accountable thing, we hold each other accountable for any mistake. You know, the, the big thing is knowing who, uh, the biggest thing about learning a fight is, you know, as you, you know, said in the past, learning from your mistakes. You, you, you fuck up, and then you go, well, I fucked up, Let, let's not have me do that again. So, so then, you hold people accountable to hold themselves accountable. Essentially, e effectively, yeah. I mean, there there are times, you know, where you'll just be looking at everyone, going, "What the hell just happened?" And you'll you'll go through logs and and you know diagnose what happened. Um, I would say A six was probably the biggest example. Like working that fight out, I think we had three of us going through footage frame by frame, trying to work out what happened and how to deal with move forward. You know, um, so yeah, we just hold ourselves to the highest standard we. I think the thing is we hold each other to a high standard, but we hold ourselves to a higher standard. We, yeah, that's a we, good mentality to have. We, we always feel like we can do better, I think. Um, like, I, I know every time I do something, I go, oh, I could have used that one GCD for this instead, and it would have been better and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we always hold ourselves to the highest of standards, um, more so than we hold our group, because we expect our group to hold themselves to a highest standard as well, you know. Um, I think I think that's how we kind of approach it. Um. When I, so like, um, okay, so, so like, if I, okay, so if I was going to answer this question, um, uh, in my, okay, so on my second character, uh, obviously, so my first character, I, um, I kind of have a, uh, a unique perspective on this. Um, because on my first character, like I play with you, like I play with you guys, you guys are legit, like my best friends, like you guys oh, are, <laughs> you guys are close, <laughs> like I'm closer to you guys than I am with some of my RL friends. Like that's fucking legit, you know, like outside of uh night I don't know if you guys remember Nick or not, but outside of him and like, you know, I mean, fuck my, my son that I'm living with, I met playing this game, <laughs> you know? So like. You so, met your son playing this game? That's yes. interesting. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> and now I live with him. So, uh, so my perspective on this is kind of unique because, um, so, like the, like the goals and standards that I hold, like my, like the SAR group to, uh, I already know that everyone in the group is going to hold themselves accountable. And you know, like you were saying, Bandia, like you're going to help, like 
uh, you're going to hold yourself like higher, you know, like, um, yeah. and, uh, my, like my SAR group, uh, it's just, it's very unique because not only it's almost like we're brothers, like we're really close brothers because we can call each other out and, and we can like, you know, get heated and shit, but we know that it's for our own good. Like whenever, like someone has an issue with me, I know it's because of a valid reason. I know it's because I, I messed up somewhere, you know, and I need to fix it and stuff like that. So that's kind of like a close, I, I guess like a closer, like best friend kind of thing. But on my other character, on my other character, for the most part now, um, yeah. So for the most part, it is strictly, it is strictly business, strictly numbers. Um, so like for instance, like I was recently in a, uh, a group on Ragnarok and there was no fucking way that I was staying in that group. And the reason why was because of simple mechanic, mechanical issues, healing issues, shit like that. Right. So I'm not going to stay in that group because I don't know those people. I, that character is not like that character. I'm not trying to make a bunch of friends, you know, and shit like that. Like that character is strictly, you know, business for the most part, you know, now at the same time though, at the same time, I've met some amazing people on that character too. I've, I, I met Perez. I met June. I met Mal. I, I, I fuck man, me and grand grand. Me and, yeah, yeah. Grand, me and grand were in that fucking group. Uh, and, and then you when it, the yeah, yeah, I mean, it means <laughs> yeah. So like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, so it's it's a pretty unique, uh, I guess, perspective for me anyway. Because when I first joined that group, it was it was strictly based on like skill, and then it turned into like way more than that. It turned into like uh, you know like like friendship and stuff too, but. Uh, Sally, that, that, that group broke up. Um, but anyway, like back on topic, like what I, like what I, uh, what goals are standards? Um, I expect people to be there on time. Uh, I won't raid with people. Uh, I will not raid with people that are, that are con like consistently late because my mentality is why the fuck am I wasting time on someone that's wasting my time? I will not raid with people that can't do mechanics. I will not raid with people that can't do the basics of their job. And I will tell them this. I will tell them this. Uh, I will not raid with people that do dumbass strategies with no reason or no, or no bearing. Communication is extremely, extremely important to me when I raid. Communication is everything. If you have a suggestion, you need to be able to back it up. Not just the word because. Oh, we're just going to do it uh, because. No, no, no. Get the fuck out of here. That, 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 that doesn't work like that. That doesn't work like that. Because is not a fucking reason. You know? Like, uh, and my rate, like, the people I raid with, um, like, are, are awesome. Because they hold me to that standard. And that's, like, that's why I'm skilled at the game is because of the people I raid with, because they hold me to that standard. So, like, when you don't hold people accountable, it's, it, it, it hinders you more than I think it appears on the surface anyway. Because over time, if someone consistently makes the same mistake, and eventually the group will begin to warp itself and its strategies around that person... And that hinders the raid, I think, in, in my opinion, it hinders the raid. And that's bad for the, that's like bad for the raid group. Like my, <laughs> I value raiding just so highly. I, I, I value raiding so highly in this game because it's one of my favorite things to do. So my standards for the people that I raid with are insanely high. And I was really, really fortunate. I was really lucky actually to, to get uh, to get my character or to get my second character into a raid group that is really really awesome just like my first character like I was really fortunate to do that um, and at first it was purely because of like skill but I, I haven't raided with these guys too long maybe a couple weeks but I can already tell that uh, they have a lot of the same mentalities that our group does and um, it's really really awesome to to have that and like than like two different groups, especially when on like when you have like a perspective like mine where you have a different character that is strict that is supposed to be strictly business because on that character my goal is to clear the shit as fast as I can. I want to clear the shit as fast as I can. I want to stream it and I want to make videos. Um, 
because uh, that character, like, in, I mean, that character's like, you know, it's almost like a Twitch character, really. I mean, fuck, dude, it's been around so many servers, it's just whoring itself out, you know, it's whatever, you know? <laughs> so, but, like, uh, yeah, so the, like, the standards is, like, you, you have to show up to raid. You have to have high, like, you don't have to have the highest DPS. You have to have high DPS. You have to be good at mechanics. You can't, uh, you can't stand in shit. You have to um, be able to fess up when you make a mistake. You have to like, you have to feel bad when you do make a mistake because some people, like, I don't know if you've rated with some people, but they're just like, oh, I fucked up, man. It's whatever, you know. We'll just keep going. Like, are you serious? You 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 didn't even feel bad oh. for wasting seven minutes of my man. fucking time, you know? Like, man, you, I hate myself when I give a mistake. Yeah, I'm yeah. so angry at myself, dude. Like, oh. Yeah, exactly. So like, where the fuck did I do that? Like yeah, just... when when we were in A eight and I and I killed I killed us to those chakrams. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I remember my friend, uh, my friend. Uh, he pl- uh, he plays this game. He's a really skilled warrior. Uh, his Twitch name is Doctor Horse. He was watching the stream that that happened. And I know just by what he was typing in chat that he knew I felt bad because he was just like, man, dude, that part's hard. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man, I felt so bad, dude. Like, and I, I was I was hoping that I would get to move the boss again. I was like, oh, just just fucking let me move this boss. Yo, this boss is going to be pre-positioned before the chakrams even spawn. That's how fast he's going to be in the right position. I'm just going to boom, move it. You know, just instantly. And, like, I think that that is a really, really important, I guess, like, character issue or, like, character perk to have or whatever, you know. But trait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, like, um, like, if, in all honesty, if you can't, if you underperform in a group and you have tried countless times, like, countless times to fix your mistake but you just can't fix it like it doesn't matter how hard you try you just can't fix it excuse yourself just excuse yourself from the group i know it's cold to say that but sometimes and like we're all we're all thinking about it we're all thinking about it and we all know or have grouped with a person before that if they would have left the group the group would have succeeded like (laughs) it's just one of those things man It's, it's 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 sad but true but if you cannot correct your mistakes you need to excuse yourself because you're hindering your aid. So like, and the really, really good players, like, or the, or the players with the right mentality, like, cause sometimes you just have a shit day, right? Sometimes your connection is just shit because there's been some times where we've been doing cell runs before and my internet is just fucking shot. It is just dead, you know? And I'm DCing constantly. I excuse myself. I don't waste yeah. your guys' time. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, my internet is shit. I am sorry that I killed us, those two wipes. Just fucking rep me. You know, I, my bad, you know? And it's just, I mean, that's how it is sometimes, you know? But, like, it, I, I just, those are some of the things that I hold people accountable for. And those are some of the things that people say that, like, they're like, oh, well, you know, he's a fucking elitist. He's a bully. And you know what? I mean, if, if, if that's what makes me that, then I fucking love it. I fucking love it because that's, because that's how I feel that, that, um, that you should, you should, like, you should have that mentality in a raid. And I got that mentality from my friends. I got that mentality because they hold me accountable for that. And they, those are their standards for me, or at least that's how I feel anyway. But anyway, my rant's over. So, all right. Yeah. So what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 me? You, yeah. You're the one to go, yep. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, we're in the same group, so I guess we, we kind of have the same thing, but you know, as far as goals and standards, like it, it's going to vary like, for, for, Group to group, right? Like different groups are. You have hardcore, you have midcore, you have, you know, casual, and, and everything in between, right? So I guess because different different players play this game at, at different levels of intensity, um, uh, you know, as far as as far as things like standards go, you know, it, it's gonna it's gonna vary from from group to group. But the biggest thing to me isn't so so much like how good you are at the game or this and that. It has more to do with attitude, and you know, all I ask is just 
be considerate and and have a good attitude because if you have a if you have a great attitude everything else will fall into place i mean i don't know very many people who have a great attitude but suck at the game because if you have a great attitude you're going to get a ton of practice you're going to do a ton of research you're going to study up on the fights before you go and it, you know if the videos are available at that time and no matter what what level you're playing this game at that that is one constant truth is if your attitude is good everything else will fall into place you know the way you communicate with your teammates you know everything that you do um, so you know certain certain things trigger me when people are like extremely selfish or ex extremely inconsiderate you know when the rest of your your party is vit melding you know to prepare for a certain fight and we you all decided that vit melding is what you want to do and then one guy goes you know what Fuck bit melds. I don't want to bit meld. I want to fucking get the highest parse on FF logs. I'm gonna get that crit, baby. I'm gonna get crit yeah. spell speed on everything. I, I, and then you fucking yeah. start dying to mechanics, and it's like, I, I check the FF logs, or not the, FF, the I check the ACT, uh, and I'm just like, oh look, you died because you took 500 more HP or more damage than you have HP. You know that that is an attitude thing, right? Um, if you don't know how to play your class because you just didn't practice it enough, or maybe you're just doing, it, you're, you know, fuck, I don't want to learn my rotation. I'm going to do it my way because it's easier. Well, that's an attitude thing too. Um, you know, uh, if, if you can't if you can't adhere to your group strategy, it's like, okay, guys, save cooldowns. Don't use your cooldowns here, so we can save it for the DPS check. And you're just like, okay, everyone else is saving cooldowns. I guess I don't have to because everyone else will beat the DPS check for me. I'll get a better parse if I get in my full opener. And, and then, you know, that's an attitude problem, too. Um, all I ask is that, you know, have a good attitude and also hold me to that, too. I, like, I, I know my, my biggest flaw is I get real salty sometimes. And I get I get real grouchy and whiny. So, you know, I, I, I know when I do that and I feel bad for the rest of the night. But, like, I have attitude problems, too. And, like, I, I, I hope you guys hold me to that standard and be like, yo, Bach cut it out or whatever, right? But uh, <laughs> you know, Bach, I'm gonna be honest. Every time I talk to you, I've never seen anything negative in your voice or what you say. Or dude, I'm I, so I don't fucking know. salty all the time. <laughs> you, just haven't yeah. me yet. you haven't seen him in raid, yeah. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> uh, I I bitched out. I I felt bad about it. I got I was I was actually salty about something else, and I kind of took it out in Doc, and I felt bad because a lot of time I I think it's because Noms used to have a stone skin macro. So he just hit it and he didn't care. So I'm different than Noms. I'm not as nice as Noms. So like I'm just like, yo, Doc, why the fuck aren't you stone skinning, dude? I, I'm AFK. I was stone skinned for you when you're AFK. Why aren't you stone skinning? And it's such a small thing, but like, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes my 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 salt kind of comes out, you know, really negatively. So just shit like that. But it's, stuff like that kind of takes its toll on the group. So attitude's such a big deal to me, and I I think that's that's the biggest thing. So yeah, that's that's the thing. That's the biggest standard is you know if if you have a good attitude, it really shows in everything that you do, and every then yeah, that's all. That's that's all there's to it. Sounds good, man. Well, remember how we were like really gonna do a two-hour show today, Kevin? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's fucking yeah, yeah, two forty yeah. right now. So uh, unless anybody has anything else to say about that, that's that's a pretty deep. It's a pretty yeah. deep. Uh, topic though uh if it, unless anyone has anything else to say we can move on to what's the word yeah, let's I'm, do it i'm good okay right. what's what's the word all right hold on one one second let me get the professionalism that is fine oh yeah dude fucking yeah. jesus christ <laughs> this shit's ghetto as fuck okay. okay we'll try to blaze through this as quickly as possible 420 blaze it all yeah. right. The I'm idea initial. of the creator being at a lower difficulty level than Midas is blank. <laughs> you guys want me to start? Yeah, yeah you're up. You're up, Frosty. All right. Uh, spectacular. Spectacular. Uh, so you love it. Give your reason. You guys, you guys tell me. Uh, you, you're probably thinking, oh, man, he's probably doing this because he doesn't want a hard game. He wants to be a casual scrub and all that stuff. No, man, let's... This is what they did last year, or last uh, expansion, I guess you can call it expansion 2.4. Uh, I mean, the last one was easier than the second one, right? Uh, and that, it made sense because it kind of put it off into a good note. And I'm probably also thinking uh, 
from a perspective of people who are actually trying to do this for a world, world race, because they have to beat it before FanFest, at least NA does. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so, like, if they can't beat it before FanFest, then there, it's not even going to be a race anymore. And the race is actually one of the most exciting things that I see in this game. Um, and so I would love it if it could be beaten within a week and a half. And so it being a little bit easier, I, I could I could deal with it. And, I you know, I do come from a perspective where we've cleared a third turn in both uh, the first tier and the second tier but didn't clear the fourth tier but I mean the a lot of people in the game aren't clearing the fourth tier or not fourth tier I'm sorry fourth boss in each of the tiers um, and I think right now with the classes the way that they are where you have to be really good at the game all right you don't have to be really good but you have to be pretty good at the game to do optimal DPS uh, it should be opened up to people who are just good at the game and then if you're pr pretty good and you're skipping phases and you're doing all this other fancy crap and uh i think that's fine so bringing cool. it down a level is good i think oh we got the filthy casual out of the way what about yeah yeah the police stream i think the way, uh, yeah i know i know <laughs> <laughs> oh man fucking Oh, uh, dude, during that live letter, just off topic, or off topic real quick, during that live letter, man, holy shit, there were so many people spamming, spamming the, the fucking Zeno creep, saying, this is a bully strum now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. Oh, that was so fucking funny, man, holy shit. Uh, I'm glad that my stream has, has brought that, that meme, the bully strum. I will gladly take that. Uh, okay, anyway, anyway, so my, so my, my word. My word, the idea of the creator being at a lower difficulty level than Midas is acceptable. Now, that's kind of in the middle of the road. Like, why am I bitching out like that? Okay, well, well, well let me just dive into it just a little bit. So, the reason why I say it's acceptable is because Final Coil was a lot easier than Gordius and Midas, obviously. But Final Coil was fucking amazing. No one can argue that Final Coil was was not the not fucking fun, shit. Right? You know, Final Coil, uh, albeit was was more simple, it was fucking amazing. And the 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 lifespan that Final Coil had was was probably the longest. Actually, um, I guess it kind of had to be the longest because we went like eight months without any content. <clears throat> but. Uh, <laughs> but so so like as long as it's fun in that regard, I think it's totally fucking acceptable. I think it's totally fine. Um, now, the the uh, <laughs> the bully in me, the elitist in me, is doesn't want that because I want fucking I want a four leg DPS checks to come back, but even harder. You know, I want gear fucking checks and shit like that. I want bullshit, nice. you know, but like I, but I, but that's not what this game needs is the thing. That's not what the, that's not what the rating community needs. That's just what I want, you know, because I'm fucking greedy, you know, uh, but that's why I say that I think it's fine if they want to do it that way. But the only way that I will enjoy it, like me personally will enjoy it, is if it's fun like Final Coil. Because I thought Final Coil was absolutely amazing in every way. I thought the final boss, Bahamut, was absolutely amazing in every way. Um, the, like, when you saw Terra Flare for the first time, man, that was like the coolest fucking shit, you know? Oh I my mean, god, holy yeah. shit. Like, yeah. jaw, just jaw dropper. You know, you're just like, oh my god. You know, <laughs> and just... then right after that, when Ockmorn shits on you for the first time, you're just like, what the fuck was oh, that? Oh, dude. Yeah, it was fucking nuts. Yeah, it was just, it was just really good. It was just a really good rate tier. But, but anyway, so, so yeah, so my, so my word is acceptable. Those are my reasons. Uh, and I think it'll be fine as long as the content is super fun. If it's super fun, <laughs> It being easier won't really uh, won't really matter uh, too much to me. Well, my word is uh, the idea of the creator being at a lower difficulty level than Midas is uh, disappointing for me. But, wow, um, elite as fuck. 
<laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, shit, man. sorry. Was my push to talk? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. No, sorry, I mean, continue. And it all comes from a, a personal selfish level where I, I just want really hard content. That That's what I enjoy. You know, I, I did Savage Second Coil when it was still relevant and stuff like that. I, I like really pushing myself and my right team to like the absolute limit. Um, I really liked AA, um, but I don't know. I, I understand, and I, you know, as you know, said, I'm willing to accept this because it's what it's what the game needs. Like, it it, it can't cater to me because then there'll only be a thousand people playing the game or something, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I, I I would love. I would love a third difficulty that comes out with the odd numbered patches that is just like savage times two, you know. I mean, that, that would be hell yeah. They just need to introduce challenges, you know. Yep, they don't, or they that. don't have to, yeah, just challenges. Right. Say hey, look, and again, I'll bring it back. Fucking just achievements in fights. Yeah. No one uh, dies. I, achievement. I agree. Do a fight in a special way. Achievement, and then this would be enough to cater towards the people who want a harder difficulty. Plus, yep. the people who just want to beat a fight. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Easy. I, 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 I just think that their original idea for... Second uh, bringing out, Yeah, second coil. Bringing out the normal mode, it being fairly difficult, and then the odd-numbered patch is bringing out just absolutely disgustingly horrible tier where you're the just problem? really not supposed to be Savage second uh, coil? Um, Nobody did but the problem it. That's was the, the implementation. Problem. Yeah, I was about to say it was the implementation they messed up. So, like, yeah, I think it was, it was a really good idea. But man, like, if it was on a set, if it was on a separate lockout, you could queue into which one you wanted to do without having to progress through it. You got you know, more like, than a dumbass title. Yeah, exactly. If if that's how you got Diable High Elegant, I can tell you, I would have done a lot more of Savage Second Coil, and I yeah. did a lot of Savage Second Coil. Well, I, I cleared just the each fact of them multiple was... times, so you know. It was just like, the fact just it was tied to the fucking, like, why Weekly would they lockout. tie it to the raid tier when you had to be 210 to, or 110 or whatever the fuck, yeah, 110 to fucking do it? 110 wasn't even good enough. You had to have bit accessories melted. <laughs> like, like, yeah, it didn't make any sense because they're like, oh, well, this group's going to cheat a piece of gear. Oh, well, too fucking bad. They already have every piece of gear. What does it matter that they get two pieces of gear? You know, yeah. or just make the gear that drop not have any stats, like the like the craftable, diable, uh, fucking dreadworm shit. Just have that drop yeah. with like zero stats on it. Boom, there you go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They they should have made the glamour items come from there. Because I mean, how like if you saw someone walking around with like a fucking glowing dyed fucking chest, you'd be like, holy shit, that person's a badass. Yeah. Know? Like that's all they needed to do. They didn't need to make it anything mm -hmm. else, especially as. A title is just not acceptable because half the raid does half the game doesn't even have titles enabled, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I, I just want harder content, but it's a personal, like, uh, selfishness for me. So, all right, I'm up. Okay. Yeah. Um, the idea of the creator. Being at a lower difficulty level than Midas is a band-aid. I say a band-aid because I feel that it is a temporary solution to a bigger problem. And okay, well, let me start off by saying I understand why SE is doing it. I totally understand. It, it, there's this, there's a dilemma because if you make if you make content too easy, um, it's not going to challenge the top raiders, and they're going to finish everything in like six days, like they did in Final Coil. And, and they saw that as a problem, so they upped it up in Gordius. And that exposed an even bigger, that created an even bigger problem is if you make shit too hard, um, you know, the, the average raiders, not even talking about average players, the average raiders can't do it, right? So now what do you do, right? And the thing is, this, the skill level gap between raiders is so massive. Like, like the, average, the gap between average raider and the top notch raider is absolutely massive. And... I think the big problem, and this is the reason I say it's a band-aid to a bigger problem, the bigger problem is that this game doesn't teach you how to do anything. How the hell are you supposed to know how to do a proper Dragoon rotation, right, without going on Google and looking up, you know, whatever. This game doesn't teach you anything. Yeah, you would never and know. And you would never know. 
And you know, the same thing goes with everything else. This game doesn't teach you how to do anything. And and you know, it's it's Square Enix's fault that we suck at their own game and we can't clear their content. It's their fault. And I you know, I played single player games that taught you how to play that game better. And this is a game that they benefit. They get paid for how long we continue to play this game and people get satisfaction from getting better and better at the game. What you know, when when they when players when people get good at this game, it feels good and they want to keep playing it. They're just like, I'm really good at this game now. I want to keep playing it. And so I I think I think this is um, a temporary solution, but I think if this game supported the players, the ra the rating scene better, there would be a, a higher demand for for better content. I mean, all they have to do is you know have have little challenges, have little um, tutorials on how to how to play your class. You know, maybe maybe in the they could build upon the uh, um, the novice hall or whatever, and and be like, okay, here's a challenge. These NPCs are beating the shit out of each other. These guys are on your side. Heal these two NPCs while DPSing these ones, and now you've taught a healer how to use his cleric stance properly, right? How the hell they, else was he going to learn how to do that? Don't they and, have something like that in novice where you have to do damage as a healer? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But you know, it it just doesn't challenge the player to a point where he's ready to raid. This game doesn't get you ready to raid. It just feeds you to the sharks. And some players are, you know, they're maybe they're more experienced with MMOs, or maybe they just have a knack for this sort of thing, and they're just good at it, right? So, you know, we we will learn the class that we want to play, and we'll just, you know. Um, we'll, we'll learn the intricacies of the class, but for people who are, are trying to dip their feet into raiding, where do they go? You know, they have to uh, resort to guides and stuff, which are nice. I mean, the community takes care of itself pretty well, but the game's got to give us some re some support, right? So I think I think the fact that they had to lower the difficulty in order to to cater to you know lesser skilled players, and as elitist as that sounds. They're 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 patching up a bigger problem, which is that the game, the, the game doesn't set up players to succeed. Yeah, you know I, I definitely think. Yeah, I definitely agree. SE's in inability to properly inform their players is is a fucking yeah. real. It's fucking real, man. As, especially when I, I've played several MMOs, and I say this one has probably some of the most intricate class design out of a lot of them. Like. To fully optimize a character in this game takes a lot of work. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, well, yeah. It's it, it really hard. The, the, yeah. This this game is so deep, and and they're they're thinking of making the game simpler. I'm like, why don't you just teach players how to how to you yeah. know do shit? You know, um, okay. and and beyond that, um, like. Um, their solution was the mentor system. That is the laziest fucking yeah, shit. It's, it's just, just let we don't them want to take care of themselves. We don't want to teach, yeah, we don't want to teach the, the players. So let's just make a separate chat room so that they can they can handle the problem themselves. You know that is so lazy. But anyway, like, yeah, that's like my that, Well, that also goes into the whole like some mentors shouldn't be mentors. Like the, yep. <laughs> the the expectation, or the, yeah, the expectations and requirements to be a mentor is just a fucking joke, man. It's Claire. a fucking joke. And I'm I'm a mentor, and I don't even know how because I don't think I've <laughs> met any of the requirements. <laughs> like I it's mean, a good idea. I don't idea. even know how the mentor system works, and I'm a mentor. Well, like, I don't know how to enter the channel. Gill, gill spammers, anyway. So yeah, like, like it's I, a good yeah, idea. But it was just, it was just implemented just so yeah. badly. It was just so fucking badly. Um, but anyway, okay. So the next, uh, so yeah. So uh, the next. Moving on. What's the oh, word? Oh, by the way, um, just want to encourage everyone in chat for the what's the word. Feel free to just shout yes. your word in chat. I oh wanna, yeah. We want to know. We want to know what you guys, what you guys come yeah. up with. I, I saw a lot of uh, negative shit for the creator being a lord difficult. Yeah. People yeah, saying stuff like good. cancer and like. Looks like they're agreeing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really it's, interesting to see what the what the what the fucking get some controversy in here, yo. Let's get some cockfighting going on. Let's fucking go, <laughs> you pussies. All right, let's go. Next, next. What's the word? I hope the final boss of Alexander is going to be. <clears throat> I'll take this one because. Right. Let me let me take this one just Actually, just because I'm yours. trying to like pick fights in chat. Right. Mine, okay. mine leads Go. off yours. That you know. So. My uh, 
Okay, so I hope the it's it's kind of more than one word, but man, whatever. Uh, I hope the final boss of Alexander is going to be DPS intensive. DPS intensive. I'm talking like pff, fucking yo fourth leg A4 or third leg A4. Yo, twice that. Okay, maybe not <laughs> twice that, but I'm talking DPS intensive. I'm talking like like uh. You, okay. Okay, well, why what, do you want that? Okay, okay, I okay, I want that because I think that maximizing your damage, and this is just my personal opinion, uh, I think that maximizing your damage to the extreme, I mean like top tier, 99, 98, 100th percentile, I'm talking extreme we can't DPS. We can 99th percentile. That's not how percentiles work. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is an intense DPS check. I mean, but what I'm talking about is, I, <laughs> I think, think that, that it's, over his head. Anyway, I cool. think, I think yeah. that it's more fun to try and maximize your damage than it, than it is to do mechanics. And be, the reason why I think that is because I think that mechanics in this game are pretty simple. I think that more or less, they're pretty simple. There's a tether, you grab it, you know, there's a prey, you take it away. There's a big-ass fucking circle with pointing in arrows you stack. You know, oh, look, there's a fucking, you know, double rocket punch with a three-second cast. I better use a cooldown. I think that for the most part in this game, mechanics are pretty easy. They're pretty easy. But what I think, what I find to be more difficult uh, is when you try to maximize your damage to the extreme. I think that, like, now me personally, <laughs> I know a lot of people aren't going to agree. That's fine. But I think that me personally, I hope that this, that the final boss is going to be extremely DPS intensive. I know it's not going to be. I already know it's not going to be because they've already said that it's not going to be. All right. But, but a man can dream. Okay. <laughs> a man can hope. Okay. So that's my word. And that's I'm not fair. changing my it's, word. It is your word. So it is you my word. <laughs> Now, my, mine sort of leads off from Xenos, actually, because I want, I hope the final boss of Alexander is going to be challenging. Now, when I say challenging, I mean, I really like mechanics being thrown at me. So I'm kind of on a different spectrum to Xeno. I, I just really love tons of mechanics being thrown at me and just how the hell do I deal with all this crap and still do my rotation. Like... I, I like it when they force you to deal with really complex shit while you still have to perform your role. Um, I don't know. I, I just... I, 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 do, I do like DPS checks as well for the same reasons Zeno said. I don't want it to be challenging, but I, I, prefer, I prefer skill checks more than gear checks. Um, I'm not entirely sure how they would implement it, but you know, I, I, just want, I just want skill checks. That, that's what I love. It's just how well coordinated is your raid? How how good are you at dealing? I mean, they could even add slight RNG elements. Like, how good are you at dealing with slight RNG? You know, things like that. I, I just want challenge. I just want to be pushed to the limit. You know. Nice. I can get behind that. All right, you I do your word about can too. <laughs> Me? I'm up. Okay. Yeah. I hope the final boss of Alexander is going to be revolutionary. Um, your guys' word was more about like difficulty and challenge. Yep. Mine is more about creativity. That's such a big deal to me. I love I love I love seeing boss designs. I like I like seeing how devs um, you know challenge us and, and, and how what, what kind of shit that they can throw at us and, and make us do something that we've never seen before. And uh, kind of going back to what I said earlier in the podcast um, but uh, yeah, I want to. I want to see something crazy and and just, just like you know, completely out of the box. And I, I want them to wow me and and just like, like, completely blow my mind. Like uh, from a from a creative standpoint, I, I want them to get really creative. So that that's what's important to me. Yeah. All right. I can kind of write off that a little bit. Uh, you know, the last time I've seen something that was pretty revolutionary it was Nissy. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, god. Yeah, come what, on. What's I mean, wrong? Is, this, wrong. is this a different <laughs> game? Is this a different game you're talking about that we've never played before? I don't know I, what you're I've, about. Never, I've never done Nisi. What is that? You mean Nisi yeah. when you go into the Pinnacles and uh, yeah. in A8? It, it gives you like a little dot. That's nothing to worry about. 
Uh-huh. That's not revolutionary. <laughs> so that pretty much makes you know what I want from the game completely different. I, I'm okay with them doing some revolutionary things, but I would also like it if it could be cheese free, where you can't skip Nissy. You can't skip these creative things, and you have to deal with them. You can't just sack it and get rid of a mechanic. I mean, the, the main recurring mechanic of, you know, you had dive bombs back in the day. Now we have sacking your players to avoid mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I'm okay if you have to do DPS, or you have to do something crazy to avoid a mechanic, but when you just kill somebody, you're like, yeah, you just go die, and we'll ignore that it actually exists. I, I, I don't like it. I wish that this tier could go cheese free and we don't have to deal with that anymore i mean i'm also okay with you know forcing people to die and you have to resurrect them but not the skip mechanics it just seems so gimmicky and i i want it to be completely avoided this tier i hope we never see that again uh, man, I, I, <laughs> man, I, I i love playing warrior on a4 and dying three times oh man it's so, so, so fucking great yeah dude. same yeah so <laughs> now we're gonna great. res the people that we're sacking Gotcha. Yeah. Right, if they're right. sacking, just leave me out of it. I don't want to res or, or sack. Just leave me out of it. <laughs> Alright, so this uh, next what's the word is kinda kinda funny. Kinda funny. Uh let's see. Alright. The next hairstyle they should add to this game is blank. You wanna take this one, Block? Me? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, the next hairstyle they should add to this game. I'm I'm a huge fan of fan service. I'm a sucker for fan service. So give me give me some FF7 hair. Give me some Sephiroth. Give me some Eris. So I I know I'm, I'd probably regret it if if they actually went ahead and did it because you know every freaking 13 year old kid who plays this game is gonna have Sephiroth <laughs> hair, Sephiroth hair. But yeah, give give me give me some of that. That that's that's my choice. What do you think, Bandia? Well, I see. I, I have two answers. One, one I'm going to say first because it's not really a hairstyle, but it's something I really wish this game had, and it's similar. Is proper beards? Okay, 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 okay. No, but, you know what? Fuck that beard styles, man. We're gonna the next yeah. hairstyle slash beard style. We're in that right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I, slash I, beard I style. Them, beards are yeah, very I, important. I'd love a big yeah, fucking bushy important. beard on my female <laughs> character. Yeah. Tell me you wouldn't. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I think I think just having facial, like proper facial hair, not not like little tufts of hair, like proper big bushy Viking beard and stuff like that, that'd be awesome. A I, man's I, beard. Yeah, man's beard. A man's yeah. beard. That's what they need, yeah. man. R- Ramu's beard, perfect. I want that on my character. There nice. we go. Someone nice. just said that in chat. The longer the beard, <laughs> the more lightning you can shoot out shoot out of your fingertips yeah. on top of a mountain. Yeah, man. Have you seen the the Ramu minion? He holds his staff with his beard. I want to be a ninja fighting with my beard instead of my arms. <laughs> <laughs> that's, there we go. That's slightly different, but yeah, that's, that's well, what I want to see them at. What about you, Frosty? All right. So, I mean, this question's kind of an odd question for me because I don't, I don't really pay attention to haircuts. I, well, I you just wear the mog head health. like all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So my haircut stays pretty static. Nothing really changes <laughs> with it, man. Uh, but you know, so I thought I was like, what could I think of that would be something that is not in Final Fantasy? Even if I didn't investigate what hairstyles are actually in the game, I know for a fact, and some people who used to be kids back in the '90s might know what I'm talking about. Uh, but you know, have you guys ever watched Rugrats? Oh uh-huh, yeah, yeah, I have yeah, indeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a there's a doll in that game, Angelica's doll called Cynthia. She <laughs> okay. has one of the most outrageous haircuts <laughs> in the world. Can we get a picture that, of that on screen? Yeah, can we yeah, get a picture? Can that? That? If you post that in chat, yeah, I got it. I... Imagine somebody in your raid with that. <laughs> just pops up and I'm gonna go up here and tank the out of this boss and uh, with a Cynthia doll haircut there you go there you go she kind of looks like Miley Cyrus <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know you know what's funny I typed in uh, Cynthia doll 
picture in Google, and Miley Cyrus came up. <laughs> 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 no joke. Oh, wow, that's great. So, okay, all right, all right. So my, so my hairstyle. All right. So my hairstyle. Now, all right. Now they, now they already have it in the game. But hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me explain. They already have it in the game, but not for males, which is fucking stupid. It's so fucking dumb. But the hairstyle that they should have for males are dreadlocks. Fucking dreadlocks, because I used to have dread. Like I'm bald as fuck now, but I used to have dreadlocks, and when I had dreadlocks, oh my god, I loved I can, my dreadlocks. In, I can agree with Zeno. In all I the games that I play, all the MMOs, my character, if they have dreadlocks, I will always pick dreadlocks, and I'm not t- like these are the kind of dreadlocks I'm talking about. Let me post this shit. <laughs> I don't understand. Those why are the it's kind of dreadlocks. Person. Should it be I'm like males about. have dreadlocks? Uh, every, I mean, everyone should oh have my access fucking to dreadlocks. God. Did you just get back from your ICP concert? No, I just, that's just my hair, dog. That's just my <laughs> hair. Hold <What> on, <is> <laughs> was that you? That's me, uh, man. No way, that's the same person. <laughs> that's me, know, I'm man. 19. I'm 19. Yeah, I got another picture. Hold on, let me find another picture. I got another picture, too. Here's one of me when I'm 21, man. Hold up. There you go. Boom. You look like you're dressed up for Halloween. <laughs> dude, I, dude, every day was Halloween for me. Man, where you come from? Chat, we're doing a podcast. What the fuck? Sorry, sorry, my bad. I couldn't contain it. <laughs> well, it's either I show pictures of my dreads or I tell another warrior RP story. You pick. So I guess I, I'll I guess go with the picture. RP, 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 yo, RP, yo, 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 hold go. on. I, I gotta call it Chet here. You won't show up for the for, for the show, but he'll show up to make fun of Zeno's hair. <laughs> oh my god. So what made you decide on, not man. to start, you know, rocking that anymore, man? Uh, I, mean, I One day I woke up and I made the worst decision of my life. That's that's what happened. I woke you up. You can stop. You can keep going now, man. Grow I it mean, back out. Do it. I, dude, I'm fucking bald as shit, dude. I'm Just like clinging on to the small strands of hair that I have. Like each each strand of hair that falls out of my head, I have a funeral for it the next day. I've been having a lot of fucking funerals this past year. Let me tell you about it. Get hair extension. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. So so all right. So here's the last the last what's the word? The last what's the word? The conclusion of the Midas raid tier leaves me feeling what, Bandia? Well, I'm excited because it's leading on to a new raid tier. Um, And progression is my favorite thing to do. So I'm super excited to be moving on and starting a new tier, learning a new fight, progressing, you know? So I am really excited. I'll miss Midas, but yeah, I'm excited. Very excited. What about uh, you, Bob? Me? Okay. The conclusion <laughs> of Midas straight tier leaves me feeling leaves me feeling a little sad actually. Um I I like Bandy, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty damn excited. I'm pretty I'm pretty hyped for for the creator, but at the same time, I had a lot of fun in Midas. I mean people people shit on Midas. Well some people do. I'm not one of those people. I love Midas. I thought I it was really Midas. well done. I, I love the brute justice robots. I wish we could go to fan fest and just like cosplay as the brute oh, justice dude, robots. I'd That'd be totally awesome. Be down for that, man. <laughs> but uh, I, I love, I love Midas. It's like, um, you know, as y- y- even though it's, it's, you know, the the end of one thing is the beginning of another. Um, I, I feel like I feel like we're we're saying goodbye to an old friend. You know, um, Midas was great. I, I I'd like to see. Creator, top that. What about you, Frosty? All right, so uh, I'm going to preface this a little bit. This tier has been kind of a weird tier. Our group has gone through so many different changes, so many different little issues and everything. Uh, We've had that in Gordius, too, but we had a little bit more this tier. Um, 
but this tier was great. The bosses were wonderful. Uh, I think after the balance fix with A6S, it, it seemed like it was a better incline, even though you know people still say A7S is easier than A6S. Um, I don't mm-hmm. completely agree with that at all, because I think A7 is punishing enough to where if you're a group that will make mistakes in a fight, it's harder to recover from it, where if you made mistakes in A6S, you can recover from it pretty easily. Um, but that being said, you know, I, I love this tier a lot. I wasn't able to complete this tier, uh, with the group that I have. So I will say that, let me bring up the word, the conclusion of Midas Ray tier leaves me feeling unaccomplished. Mainly because I did not finish, uh, Aidas. And we've only touched it a little bit. And we, every single week that we went into it, we had issues with A7S and trying to get different members in there. Uh, and training other people to get into our strategy. And it was just really, really rough. So it's sad. I wish that it would have ended differently, but I'm excited that we're going to have new content and we're going to have start. hopefully a, yeah, a fresh start and hopefully a much better uh, attempt going into this tier. Can I chime in for this one? You can chime in. Dan. Sure. That's All it. right, yo. Goodbye, A7 balls. You will not be <laughs> 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 oh nice, man, nice dude. Yeah, this is the only mechanic I struggled with this raid here, like hardcore struggled in the progression. No, it's hard. <laughs> like A7S as a scholar is, it proves if you're a good scholar or a bad scholar. And I was a bad scholar going into A7S, but I thought I came out an okay scholar from A7S. I don't know, Doc. I think you, you're pretty damn good at that fight. You kick ass at that fight. Well, yeah, that's because I had to go for hours and hours on normal just to get hit by the boss. To figure out how they work. <laughs> <laughs> so, confirmed balls, big black balls are irresistible to Doc. All right, all right moving on. Sorry, <laughs> on. Okay, okay, good way to move on. The, all right, so the conclusion of the Midas Raid tier leaves me feeling proud. The reason why I say proud is because I met some amazing people uh, progging through Midas. I had an amazing time. The I killed Midas relatively early and I was I was very proud of that. Um and just the overall experience uh left me feeling yeah, very proud that You killed I, it early twice with two different groups, dude. Yes. Yes. I killed it early twice with two different groups. <laughs> so um yeah and at the conclusion of of Midas uh, the SAR group went through a little bit of changes. People uh, not interested in the game as much, and they they left. And the people we got to replace them uh, are, you know, some of my best friends. So I'm really like, yeah, I'm really proud that I got to raid with with you guys, and I'm really looking forward to 3.4. Uh, man, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to raiding uh, in 3.4 with you guys and my EU group as well. I just, yeah, so that's why I'm proud of, of all that. So, But yeah, so let's see. That's a pretty good, nice note there. Cool. Yeah, man, uh, I met some really cool people. Did some really cool stuff, so yeah. Holy see. shit, we have questions. Yeah, we do have questions, so that's so that's the end. Uh, that's the end of uh, what's the word segment. Uh, pretty much uh, takes uh, takes us to the wrap up. No one likes to wrap up, uh, but from questions from the strum, um, let's see. We have one. We'll just try to knock out as many of these as we can. Uh, yo. Box opinion of Scholar Vex and White Mage, Zeno the White. You're putting me in the spot. Holy shit, man! What? It, <laughs> it was the first. It was the first question. Honestly, you got, you guys give Zeno's healer a lot of shit, <laughs> but I think Zeno's really good at healing, and Thank he's you. only gonna get better. So, you guys, you guys can talk shit now, but like. I don't know. <laughs> it, it gets it gets my seal of approval. It it would it it wouldn't be a stream though without fucking trashing my healing abilities. So please continue. I, I, I was to gonna say it. they 
<laughs> the, the only experience I have with you know healing is in a palace of the dead where we all died like sixty times because you forgot that you oh, were dude, a healer. You've never done hey, look, with look, Palace okay. of the Dead doesn't need a healer, man. What are you talking I've, about? Oh, uh, we needed a know. healer that time, and I wasn't healing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but hey, man, that means you know we we did what a six s a seven s a seven. Yo, I yeah. two shot a seven. Yeah, yeah, two two attempts, and you got it. And you, your your damage percentile was like in the sixties or yeah. something. <laughs> Yeah. Feels good. You don't even have your shit melted. It's it's yeah. <laughs> All right. So All right, next question. Um. Uh. Favorite. Okay. Okay. Favorite memory of Midas. This is for everybody. Okay, I'll go first because I already have mine. I'll go first. My favorite memory of Midas was all right so and chat will know what I'm talking about all right so so we had this run on a6 oh man it was just it was it was high school cafeteria sloppy joe and I fucking I fucking uh we go from uh from blaster to brawler right and I'm like running in and I think someone's ahead of me but I'm but they're not and I run it just a little too close, and I aggro brawler, and bam, 40k, just instantly. That was first death. Uh, and then I get up, <laughs> I get up, and then uh, when I res, I res into a double, a double cannon, and it goes through like invuln. So I die again, <laughs> and I'm like, are you fucking serious? And then, Okay, I res a third time, all right? A third fucking time. And I don't know how, I don't know why, but uh, apparently when he did single cannon, I was just a little too far north and a little too close, and he hits me with the single cannon. So I, <laughs> I literally die like three times back to back. And like... Chet just tanked the whole, he just tanked all the blaster. He just, you know what? I got you, man. You just, you just keep dying. It's fine, man. You know, just keep res. This is fucking comical. I got you, you know? And it was just, that was one of my favorite fucking memories because that night, that A6 was so fucking fun, man. Like it was so fucking fun. And yeah, man, it was like, oh dude, I just, I just shit the bed. Like just repeatedly, like just, you just, you just keep shitting the bed and it's, it was just really hilarious. So that's one of my favorite memories of Midas. I mean, I guess I, guess I could throw one out there. It's really hard to pinpoint one because I've had so many like, memories of just wiping and dying. It's just like, uh, there is a few players that we had that were really sloppy and one person lived and we cleared the fight those are pretty good but I would say our a7s clear was definitely one of our big ones uh, so I come from a server on Exodus or well it was called Exodus um, not a huge server not the best one out there uh, and so we had an issue where our black mage couldn't make it for like a month so we had someone come in and just kind of feel for him for almost an entire month uh, while we were going through it. And while all this was going on, we were like, we got to get off Exodus. This, this server is definitely being a pain in the ass to get replacements for. It's just not working for you know the kind of group that we're running because sometimes we have to fill in and we can't fill in anybody on this server. Uh, and I feel like I'm begging every single time. So... On the very last night, I kind of halfway stronghold uh, our buddy to get in there. Just saying, guy. Definitely props to that guy. Um, to go in there and help us clear the fight. And he was the only person that we subbed in that night, but he's learned the strategy and everything with over the last month. Um, and we're like, this is the last night we're on the server. And lo and behold, we sit there, we go through it all, and we clear it, and we peace out of that server instantly. But... It was still great clear. Uh, I, I'm really happy that he helped out. It showed me that you know there are people out there who are not complete pieces of shit. So. Okay. Um, favorite memory of Midas. Um, so with my old group, my my previous group, uh, our first week, we we kind of started a little bit late because we struggled a lot with Sephiroth of all things. We would literally wait for seven hours to Sephiroth. <laughs> As Jeez. as a, yeah we were, we were, we were shit anyway so <laughs> like 
I, I, I told um, I, I told my group in 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 uh, a, if we beat A5S before the, the end of the week that I would change my name to something pretty uh, unflattering. So we actually beat it with like two minutes left uh, before reset and. Uh, so yeah, I'm a man of my word. I had to ch I changed my name to Buck Fok Choi for a week uh, yeah, because yeah, we reached our goal. So yeah, I ch I changed my name and it was hell for the entire week because everywhere I went in Idleshire, somebody would whisper me, "Hey, why'd you change your name to Buck Fok Choi?" So that I had to explain myself every single time, and I was so happy when I was able to change my name back. But, yeah. That's mine. Then, yeah. I don't even I don't even know where to start. And we had so much stupid stuff happen in progression and things. Like so much. Um well, I I don't to share too. Oh yeah, B Banos can share one as well. He's in my group at the time. Um I I think it, it's not a favorite moment, but it, it's probably a funny moment. It's uh so we, we finish normal mode and we go into A5. It takes us about 20, 25 minutes to get Hummel Foss down the first time, which you know, we're full 210, very undergeared, what that. We go in, 30 minutes into progression, one of our players has to leave because they forgot to repair. So we leave, they repair, and then we get back in, we beat Hummel Foss again. So we're back progressing on the boss. And after like three or four wipes, another one of our players clicks on the exit instead of the shortcut. So oh my God. Everyone, does that? everyone had a group like they everyone had a play like that. <laughs> Who does that? that? And uh yeah, Achilles did, did that in my that. group. Yeah. Like so the, the the first like three hours of our progression was us killing Homo Foss like three or four times because we kept having to go leave and come back. <laughs> this is your favorite memory? No, no that's the funny one. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I, like, it's not a favorite, it's just one of the things that stuck out, it's like the start of the progression was just that. I mean, I don't know, beating A8 was pretty nice. Beating all of the turns for the first time was great. I mean, we beat A7 on my birthday, that was pretty nice. Oh, nice, dude. We beat yeah, A8 my, on my birthday. Well, the day you didn't go, tell us that. I did. Uh, I probably just didn't pay attention. You, you, probably, you probably weren't paying attention, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, we VA7 on my birthday. Nah, that was fine. I didn't get any loot, so, you know. Actually, no, I got the dip. So, I did get some loot. There we go. I got the weapons. Yeah, that's probably my best memory there. Getting the weapons for my birthday. I got a couple, but I got you to pick one. You chiming in, Pain Train? Yeah. Dude, Pain, Pain Train's guys. ready to roll. I think you can chime in. <laughs> I, got well. a, I got to pick one. I got a good one from A5, and I got a good one from A8. What do you want? One. You get one. You get one. You're Take lucky to get one. Do eight. <laughs> eight, eight. All right. Eight, eight. We haven't killed it yet, so we're still progressing. It's second phase. I got fucking Swindexer on my ass. Four, all four, of a sudden, you saw blaster pushes, or yeah, brawler pushes. And then, like, the orbs start coming out. So, like, the big orb spawns right on top of me. For some reason, the big orbs didn't move. And then, all of a sudden, it just takes a right turn. It. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It literally just went right and then started going into the middle of the room. And I was just absolutely mesmerized. <laughs> and then I fucking failed the height error. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I, uh, brain happened. error. It only this ever happened one time after that. I yeah, don't I know what it was. I, I, I remember that because I remember looking at the stream afterwards and the, the full like 20 seconds of Banos just not knowing what to do anymore and just being so confused. Like, <laughs> ah, it was good. That was really good. All right, next question. Yeah, so, okay, hold on. Uh, um, let's see. Okay, uh, all right. Okay, let go. How do you go about progression? Bang your head against every mechanic until you magically beat it. Take a step back for maybe even 30 minutes or something to discuss it. Enlighten me. Hell yeah, you have to discuss it. 
You have to you have to understand the mechanic, and then you gotta come up with a way to beat it. You can't just bang your head. Like if a strategy doesn't work, you gotta figure out why it doesn't work. So I I, I think using your brain is better than banging your head against the wall. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, for for me, I think you have to take both approaches depending on the mechanic. Sometimes you just have to keep trying things and see what works. Sometimes like you die just to have it to enough, smack. kind of thing. Yeah, some, yeah, like 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 vortexer. You just had to reach it and try things and die, and then I think, as I said, we had three people recording it, and we went through frame by frame, trying to work out how lightning passed, how water passed. You know, so, sometimes you just have to bang your head at it. But after you bang your head at it, and you have enough. Data, yeah, but then you discuss how you want to progress forward and what, how you think it works, and then you try a new strategy. So that, I think it's a mixture a of both. Though, because like that kind of banging your head isn't banging your head for the purpose of, of until you beat it. It's more banging your head for the yeah, purpose of, of gaining information. Gaining data, yeah. Yeah, you're 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 trying to get enough information so that you could actually form a strategy. It's like yeah, okay, that's what I'm saying. It's now like a mix how, of both. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a mix yeah. of both, though. Like. There, there are some mechanics where um, you just bang your head against it until you magically beat it. I can tell you, bouquet on T six was one of those. You just bang, you just banged your head and died to bouquet, and then someone was like, "Wait, I lived. How did I live?" Like, you know. So yeah. there, there are certain mechanics where you just have to bang your head against it until something happens, and you go, "Oh, that's how it works." And it's sometimes actually... you, you know, take a while. That's my how we do it. This this reminds me of something like um, back when I played WoW is like a hardcore uh, raiding guild in WoW, and uh, I was in charge of recruitment. And you know we just had regular like questions on our application. But at the end of the, uh, the application, there's a question, as it wasn't a skill testing question or anything. It was, it was just just this question. So try to think of what the, your answer would be. But anyway, you approach a boss. The boss has three ads. You know absolutely nothing about the boss except for this fact. The, the ad in the left, if you kill it, it increases your DPS for a certain amount of time. If you kill the one in the middle, it increases your, it, it makes your tanks buffer, or you take less damage for a certain amount of time. And then the, the one on the right, if you kill it, increases your healing for a certain amount of time. So DPS buff, tank buff, and healing buff. Which one do you kill first and why? I would kill the tank one first. And the reason and why? why is because with the chance of seeing what the other two do, with the increased yeah. chance of... One yeah. could make the argument, well, you can kill the DPS one first. Right. Um, so you can hopefully kill the other one mm -hmm. before it matters. But I don't like that approach because um, I think living long enough or the longer you can live just to just to see shit like yes you're going to fail this dps check mm -hmm. yes it doesn't matter just live long enough until you hit some sort of enrage right whether it be so see there's no correct answer to this question the, the reason when this question was on the application is for the the person the, the applicant just to see what he answers it with just to see if he's able to use his brain you know, every now and then you get a person with a dumb ass answer like, whatever the raid leader tells me to, <laughs> you know, but, but whatever answer you have, if you can justify it with logic, that's good enough for me. But my answer would have been does exactly the same as yours, kill a tank one, because the object of the fight isn't to kill it on the first attempt. It is to gain information and killing the yeah, tank one increases your survivability so you can see more of the mechanics and learn more about the fight. And maybe that is the right, right answer. Maybe it's the wrong answer. That's irrelevant. The only relevant thing is you need to learn the fight, learn the mechanics, yeah. piece it together, and then form your strategy around it. So that's, that, uh, that kind of ties in with the question. So that's why I kind of brought it up. Yeah, that does definitely tie in. So next question. Yep. yep. Next question. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, here's a question. Having no knowledge of the fights, what do you think it would take to make Paladin viable in this raid tier? My answer... There you go. My answer would be currently uh, make, uh, make Clemency better. 
Um, potentially give them slashing. Potentially. Um, make Bulwark better and make Shield Swipe better. Yeah. That's what I think would make Paladin viable. Or, well, Paladin's already viable. Let, let's, uh, hold on. Let me put a more in here. There you go. More viable. Because Paladin okay. is definitely viable. Paladin is definitely viable. Like, there, there yeah. are going to be yeah, groups... Yeah, we covered this topic for a long time. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, there's going to be groups that go into uh, the creator with... Uh, yeah. Uh, what about raid mechanics, though? Like, yeah, like yeah. without yeah, no. changing the class. Yeah. See, I, I mean, I just think... make things physical damage. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. make physical damage. Yeah, so make things more make things more physical damage would definitely would definitely help. Um, there are things there there are ways to make Hallowed Ground a lot better than uh, that like mechanics that make Hallowed Ground stronger than the Warrior and Dark Knight alternatives to Hallowed Ground. Yeah. Hallowed Ground is strictly better than than those. It, may, it may just sound. all boils down to whether or not the fight. Um, Allows you like like take Ifrit Extreme for instance. You remember that stacking debuff that you can completely circumvent with Hallowed Ground. So you get three yeah. stacks, and when he's about to give you three more stacks, you do Hallowed Ground to make you immune you to the next three hits. The, you can still do that with a lot. Of yeah, see, the see that's that's one such example of of how Hallowed Ground can be really strong. You know, just just based on the sheer mechanics of the fight, is the Paladin can take all those hits where a Warrior and a Dark Knight in the same situation can't do that, right? So, things that play to the paladin's strengths are physical damage, things that that are helped out with, with divine veil and hallowed ground. You know what I always thought was cool, and Chet did this in T13 progression. So, w when you're doing early prog on that fight, uh, if you guys remember correctly, <clears throat> you needed to have like you had to have X amount of HP to live through Mega Flare. Um, you also had to have X amount of HP to live through the orbs in the second phase, right? When he did uh, Rage yep. of Bahamut. So one of the really cool, and I, I'll never forget this. I thought it was so cool, is that Chet would stone skin people. Whichever DPS took two orbs, he would stone skin them. And that, that helped us severely in progression because during that time when the healers are learning and they're trying to top people up from the orb damage themselves like um while bahamut's uh or uh, just use uh using auto attacks on chet right and he's not really taking that much damage he'll stone skin like the second like the second person, like the like the two orb DPS. And I think that really helped tremendously. So I don't know if they could like do that again really but if they had some sort of uh mechanic that just did a, a stupid amount of damage unless you had like you know good gear i think that stone skin would be really really viable or really really good i guess is i guess is what i'm saying because in 2.0 or 2.x or whatever like on t13 stone skin was really really good on uh turn 13 or at least i think so anyway yeah, <clears throat> no, definitely was. um i think a big fight design is Rather than just all raid AoE either being magic or darkness, add physical raid AoE and make strength buff actually worth a damn. Because if if you if you couldn't use int down and you had to use strength down and path, paladin's that, the only that, one who can provide it, right? Pa paladin's the only one that can provide it strength down. Right now, strength down is absolutely worthless because all it does is it makes you take slightly less damage. And I mean. The healer is going to heal you the same amount regardless, so it doesn't really change anything. Right? Yeah, they're not so going to heal you based on if Halone's on the boss or not. Exactly. The same thing with, with random change. blocks and shit, you know? <clears throat> yeah, so I think just fights that require more mitigation and more types of mitigation, I think, would make Paladin slightly more viable. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think Paladin's... Uh... I think the best thing you could do to make Paladin better is get a player who isn't going to sit there and cry about how Paladins are bad the entire time. <laughs> that also helps. <laughs> you know, uh, also, uh, I think Paladin's value goes up if you don't have an Astro because of Divine Veil. Uh, yeah. Because, like, you Divine can't... So, like, if you take an instance where, let's say you get hit with a J-Kick and you don't have an Astro, well, you're not going to have Disable. Um, but Divine Veil would be really good there, you know? Because it would absorb some of that damage, so I think that I actually think if your comp doesn't have an astro, a paladin's uh, 
I guess their value goes up slightly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, because, like, Astros provide that, like, disable and the bubble and, you know, shit like that. And uh, if you don't have that, if you just have a white mage, which is, you know, it's fine. But Divine Veil is much more, I guess, potent because it's the only form of, of, uh, of shielding you have outside of a scholar, you know. Well, I guess technically a white mage because stone skin, but, I mean, you're not going to like stone skin the whole fucking party before J kick. I guess that's what I'm trying to say, so. Yeah, exactly. It's not T9 again. You don't have stone skin everyone before Mega Fire. <laughs> what do you think, Bot? The Paladin thing? Yeah. I already gave my piece on it. Yeah, you see. <laughs> we've been going over a Okay, okay. Yeah, we've been on <laughs> We've been on the pilot and hate train for a little while. Oh, okay, here. sorry. I guess it fucking <laughs> blurred together, man. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Next question. Um, okay, here we go. Here's a here's a good one. Nice. Oh, Okay, what do you think they should add to the Hall of Novice for each class to educate new players about in-game content and teach them how to properly play their job? I can take this one since I kind of suggested it. Yeah. Um, what I think they should add is, I think, I think the, they should add like a higher level of Hall of the Novice that are particularly targeted towards like class, very, like class specific, like Monk would have a different one than Dragoon. Warrior would have a different one than Dark Knight. And I know this will take a lot of work, but I think the benefits would be huge. But uh, I, I think they should be class-specific, kind of like little trials, that um, like skill testing trials. And um, so your gear is normalized, so your gear doesn't matter. And basically, it, it gives you certain objectives that kind of simulate a raid environment, like, OK, you gotta pick up this ad and mitigate certain tank busters as, as a warrior, otherwise you die, right? And make it hard, make it very hard and challenging, but you can attempt it solo as many times as you want until you get it. And whatever skills you learn there are applicable to the raid, all right? So they'll teach you different things like, you know, suppose a warrior, it'll, it'll teach you how to mitigate using Inner Beast or any of your cooldowns, and maybe you'll have a DPS check so you can't just sit in defiance all the time. And this is just like example. Every class would have their own equivalents to this, right? And finally, make it a prerequisite to enter a raid dungeon. If you haven't done it yet, you can't enter the raid dungeon until you've done all of them. And there's no excuse. People can't complain about it and say, I don't want to do these, but I want to raid. Well, you're going to do them because, you know, yeah. at least that way, you're, you're showing the game that you're competent and you've... you've You've gone through, you jumped through the hoops to, to learn these little finer details of your class, and you're actually ready to raid. And yeah, you know, um, it forces people to put forth the practice, and it gives people a means to improve. I think that's that's how it should be done. So, um, I, actually, I uh, last expansion of World of Warcraft, they did something kind of similar to that, where they had, I think it was I think it was a training hall or something, and you had to like, you said do a set of challenges. Like for a healer, you had to keep a party alive through you know waves of ads and all this stuff and it taught you the basics of dpsing a bit for the dps tanking a bit for the tank so you had to pick up all the ads and you had a healer healing you and you had dps dps <laughs> and stuff like that but you had to pass silver before you could queue into heroic dungeons you couldn't do heroic dungeons without passing silver and there was more difficult challenges but yeah i think i think it would it would it definitely help it wouldn't have to be exactly class specific like they could definitely make it role specific too um and then maybe you know, I, don't know, I think at least role specific you know and they should at least make provoke baseline that that's an absolutely ridiculous thing that provoke has to oh yeah totally but like it's a it's an yeah, integral it's just integral. provoke should be on every fucking tank class yeah. that's so stupid that it's only on gladiator that that doesn't make any sense that's yeah. just ridiculous yeah. man but, uh, Chet put it a good way. He said, uh, Bach wants a rating permit. That's actually, I don't know if you're yeah. joking or not, Chet, but that's actually exactly what I want. Yeah, I mean, you need a driver. Okay. You need to, you need to demonstrate that you're able to drive before you get a driver's license. I think rating should be the same that's way. I know, I know it's not serious, as serious as being able to drive, but like, you know, 
when you when you to get a driver's license, you have to demonstrate that you you know how to lane change, you know how to parallel park, you know how fucking stop signs work. You yeah. don't need any of that to to enter a raid dungeon. But if you did, I think players would be a lot better. You know, I kind of think that this shouldn't be just all put in like, hey, you're level 15, here's a few things, now you can learn to play the game. Hey, you're level 30, this is how you play the game. Like, with an intermediate or whatever that you do, expert uh, training place. I mean, why not just have it, like, every five levels, your job quest inspires you. To your job quest. Yeah, it just says, hey, it's this is kind of a mechanic that you can use with the abilities you have. This is how you play your class. Uh, and then yeah. have NPCs shouting at you, hey, make sure you do this. And then you have to pass these checks. Uh, and if you do everything correctly, your DPS will pass it from what they're telling you to do. Like there yeah, should be, I kind of agree. There should be, uh, to like expand on that, there should be some sort of accomplishment for getting your abilities. Like, I mean, I know this is like kind of, okay, so this is, <laughs> this is kind of stupid, but when I got Felkley for the first time, I, I was very accomplished because I had to go find a fish, I caught the fish, I baited out a bear, and then I had a fucking battle royale with the bear. I, a, a battle royale with the bear. I thought that was so fucking badass that that's how you got Fel Cleave. You fucking killed a bear to get it, right? Like, that was very satisfying to me. So I think that the other, the other abilities should be equally as satisfying. Like, you should be able, or like, no, nah, I know that's kind of easy, but my point is, is like, uh, the job quests should teach you a little bit about the move that you're getting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, exactly like it should, it should, it should tie in. So like, with with each job quest that you go, they should get like a little, a little bit harder because, like, when you hit level, you know, thirty. Okay, that's your first one. So then when you hit thirty-five, you're gonna get a little bit, like a little bit from the thirty one and a lot from the thirty-five one. So then, like. For the 41, you're going to get even less from the 30, even less from the 35, and a shit ton from the 40. You know what I'm saying? So, like, as you level up, your your job abilities and, res and responsibilities are going to compile. So then by the time you're level 60, uh, you're going to know your job, or, you know, or you should know your job anyway. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. All right, next question. Next is um oh, the top one that you just highlighted. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Okay. Uh, I'm curious for the speaker's take on this. With I-250 crafted weapons dropping at the same time as weapons from the new Primal, what do we think that will do with the turnout for uh, Sophia X? Oh, I can tell you, I won't be doing Sophia X until dive time after progression, yep. fortunately. Same. But, yeah, um, I won't either. As much as I want to do the fights. Um, I mean, what sure. if the I crafted that, weapon like, is not hard to get? Else, what everybody else? Yeah, I think that the I think that okay, so I think that the crafted weapons are good, are good and bad. I think that they're good because instantly people can get caught up. So yeah. let's say you just started to play the game like two months ago, you know, well, fuck, it's not your fault. You haven't had eight on farm for, you know, three months or whatever. You just started to play the fucking game, you know, whatever, you know, and so, uh, or the same for goes, the same can go for like people without groups or, you know, whatever the situation may be. So I think it's good in the aspect that it instantly will catch everybody up. That's fine. Yeah, but, but if. If uh, if Sophia EX is what item level are we expecting? You're 250. Probably 250. If, yeah. if the crafted is 250, why does it have to? Why does the crafted have to be 250 to catch you up? Why can't it be 240 or 245? Well, ex yeah, exactly. That's that's that's, that's uh, what I was point. gonna say next. That okay. was my next point. Was okay. that the 250 is good in this in the aspect that it catches people up, but it's it doesn't it it kind of doesn't make any sense because. Uh, Assuming the primal drops the same weapon, um, like you could just do the fucking primal. But also, it 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 also kind of mitigate or it also kind of negates all the rating gear too. I mean, just completely, like completely shits on that. Uh, I don't think the crafted weapon should have been two fifty. Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't think so at all. But I mean, that's just that's just my opinion. But like, uh, I think that if the crafted and Sophia are the same. 
like for people in my situation, I'm not going to really do Sophia until like downtime, you know, or when yeah. I'm not raiding because there's no point. There's absolutely no point because like during Prague, it's all about gear and, and like you're wanting to kill the hardest raids here. Well, yeah. if the prime It's all about maximizing your time. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And doing Sophia what are, what and about getting... not just you guys, but like what about everybody else though? Well, like the community as a whole. Like, well, yeah, so I think like for the, okay, so I think for like outside of like us and like uh, like people like that or people that, you know, don't necessarily rate or whatever, uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's probably good um, just because... I, I, think, I think it's good because there are a lot of people out there who just won't be able to afford crafted gear or be yeah. able to get it. So at least they have another option to get an equivalent piece See, of gear. I'm, I'm on a different, I, I think totally different than you guys. If, if I think if, if the weapon from Sophia EX and the crafted weapon, if they're the same item level, I think that's really, really fucking stupid. That is. is really fucking stupid. It is and that stupid. would be really yeah. disappointing. I would go as far as saying that would be absolutely tragic if that, if that was the case. And I'll tell you why is because the, I think in, in many ways it would uh, invalidate Sophia EX and it would it would deter people from doing it. It's like, why would I, I do so this too. when I could just buy the fucking no. weapon that's even better? Like, yeah, sure, I, I maybe agree. I don't have the gill for it, but that that just that just makes Sophia EX um, welfare right. status. You know, this it, is this is the how you get welfare weapon. It's gonna be Ramu all over again. Yeah, yeah or you this, not only that, but this beautiful fight, it's gonna be it's gonna be beautifully designed fight, and nobody nobody's doing it because they don't need it. Yep. Because the people yep. are, people are rewards driven, they're not content driven, and it's just going to completely trivialize the fight, and people are going to miss out on it. Uh, PF is going to be dead, like if it isn't already, yep. and it's going to be really fucking stupid if that was the case. I really hope they don't make that mistake because I love doing PF. You guys, if anyone who knows me, I am constantly in mid hog ex in in PF, and if if I'm not able to have that level of enjoyment. In Sophia, because everyone's just like, you know what? Fuck this fight. I want to learn this fight. It's easier to just buy Gil from that guy who just whispered me, yeah. you know, from well, PVP.com or whatever. And... You know, I haven't really thought about that too much. Uh, having crafted weapons at the end game is probably going to affect uh, the market for Gil sellers too. Yeah. yeah well, it doesn't make any sense because, like, um, there, like, it's going to be so. Essentially, if Sophia is 250, it's going to be obsolete the day that it drops. Because why would you get a primal weapon with two melded slots when you can get a crafted weapon with five melded slots? Like, yep. it doesn't, like, I would just get the crafted weapon. I, I would but, be really fucking pissed yeah. off if it did that, because I love doing primals, and this would, I don't yeah, know, I, it's really stupid. I, I, I agree. For, from an initial progression standpoint, for me, personally, I'm really yeah. happy, because it means I don't have to do a primal ten times while yeah, also yeah. trying to do raiding. But, but for the cost, longevity right? of this, yeah, for the longevity of the the, the scene, you know, on Sark on Sark Tennis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it's that's not going to be good because too. because there's not going to be like the primal. I mean, sure, there's going to be a mount. It's going to have a terrible drop rate, whatever. I don't know. There needs to be some gear incentive to want to do the fight as well. And if it's not going to have that, as I said, I'm not going to probably do it for the first two weeks, if not more, personally, just because it's going to be a waste of my time. Like, sure, other people like yes, it's, it's going to be fun and whatnot. But yeah, I don't know. It is a really stupid decision. Yeah, so. I well, they've never had this before. So like before, when it was uh, when you had a choice, you could either do normal mode and get that gear, or you could get the crafted gear, right? So there was a choice. So for like you know people that didn't have a lot of gill, they could just do normal mode and yeah. get that and get and get that armor. But a weapon is different from armor. A weapon is the highest. Like, it's the best piece of gear that you can possibly get. And they've never done this before. And it re it's, it's really fucking stupid when they come out with, like, primals and the, and the weapon or the, the item you get, the quote-unquote incentive to do it, isn't worth it. Like, it. like, it's just not even worth it. So, like, on one hand, it's good that they're making these 250 weapons. But on the other hand, they're going to eliminate a piece of brand new content and they're going to make people not want to do yeah. it. Yeah. So I really fucking hope that it's not, yeah, it's not 250. I hope it's like 255 or 260 or something. Yeah, but, really yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's what I think, though. 
Uh, yo. Next question. Sure. Yep. We got one more question after this. Oof. I mean, unless anyone has any more short ones. Okay, do you guys think that the devs know what the ideal rotation should be? Do you think it would match what the players come up with? Everyone answer, please. No. My answer is fuck no, and they've already admitted that several times. Yeah, they, they've proven Fuck no, they, they haven't. Don't. Yeah, they've already really? proven it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the first nerf to Ninja was. Yeah, they, they said they didn't expect players to come up with such optimal... Like, they didn't expect Ninja to do as much damage because they didn't think of the optimal rotation at the time, so they had to nerf it. <laughs> but they, they already... Like, they, they, they have a good idea of what classes rotation will be, but I don't think... They're not going to sit there and make it 100% optimal. So, absolutely not. Yeah, if they can't get out more bosses, they definitely can't like uh, troubleshoot these jobs as much as we'd want them to. Yeah, and actually chat and chat is a very good example there. Look at Dragoon's rotation. Let's clip my dot for 9 seconds because that's my optimal rotation. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> terrible I, I, I have more faith in the devs. Like, I think occasionally they'll overlook things, but I think they're, I think they're pretty smart and they, they have a decent they're, they're idea of how... Smart, yeah. I, I don't. I, I, if we could figure it out, I'm pretty sure the people who designed it could figure it out. So I don't. I mean, they could, but I think the resources that we have as million, like, or not millions, a like quarter million players trying to figure out rotations, right? Uh, yeah. it it's can, not that hard. I mean, just you, you can do you can do the math on a freaking napkin and figure out the dragon rotation, right? I mean, you could think so. Well, but, not everyone know. can, but I'm just saying yeah. that it's theoretically possible. Like yeah. it's it's not it's not out of you know I'm pretty sure you know there's smart people out there who could do it so I'm pretty sure that if you no, if you're I the just, ones designing it if you're qualified enough to have that job you could probably do that. No, no, I, I agree. I just I just think that there are definitely types where they think the optimal rotation is going to be something different to what it turns out. Yeah, to be. mistakes um, will be made, right? Like like yeah, the ninja, the, like the ninja the rotation. Ninja, they, they did a similar thing with Black Mage at the start of Heavensward where Thunder was worthless. And there's no point casting it, so they had to buff Thunder and stuff like that. So um, there are definite oversights. But when you're designing 13 jobs or whatever, you're, you're going to miss a couple of things. So, yeah, and I don't think they know the exact optimal rotation. So. I, yeah, I think that they, I mean, I, I mean, I think that they have a pretty solid idea, but I just, I don't think that... I don't think that they play the game as much as, well, they don't they play the game as much as like we do. So of course yeah. they're gonna miss shit. So like, uh, yeah, I don't think that they that they have the ideal or optimum or uh, optimal like rotations and shit. No, I, absolutely. Not. I mean, like we there, like so some of the, some classes people are still coming up with better rotations and openers and whatnot. Um, but I, I don't think they look at a class and go. Where what like at what exact second do I want to press this off G C D in my opener to maximize my damage? I think you know, they say, Well you're gonna press these buttons in roughly this order. I think that I don't think they're gonna like look at it. To like perfect little G C D lining up and stuff like that. Yeah. Well and they probably also don't poke and prod it with different like uh stats, seeing where skill speed or spell speed brings it to the most optimal point or how to fit things in a cooldown properly, you know, how to move stuff around. They, they have an idea, they lay it all out on paper, and they apply it to where it would make sense if, if everything was in a perfect world, but we, we also work in a pretty imperfect world and we find little mistakes uh, that they're going to overlook, and that happens with every job. I guarantee that they do not know the best uh, rotation when they put out it. They, they know what it should be, but they don't know how to put out the most DPS as a player would. All right, next question. Last like, one. We have like two. Oh, okay, sure. Last one. Or wait, hold on. Oh, we do have two. Okay. Any tips for finding a good raid group? Uh, my. Let's see. My. 
my advice would be to know your know your limits, have expectations, and don't don't settle. Like if you if you're in a group, you know, like let's say you're on A7, don't join an A5 learning. <laughs> you know, that's just. I mean, if I mean if you want to like regress, then that's then that's your call. But like my my tip would be. Uh, if you want to find a good raid group, I would know your limitations, know uh, what you're looking for, and go with that because you're going to be able to filter through a lot of groups uh, that way. Because some because some groups may not just be for you, you know. I mean, it happens. Like not like I mean, not every group is is going to be for everybody, right? So that's that's what I would say because. I mean, there's also like word of mouth too. Like you're gonna know, like, you know, you're gonna know if your friends group is needing a member, or you know, sometimes like keep yourself open too. Like offer to fill in for other raid groups too. So then that way you can get experience. So even though you're not in a group, if you fill in for like one of your buddies or something, you're gonna get experience. So then that experience you can take with you to add on to like your quote unquote like resume or whatever, however you want to say it you know like your total experience so like I would say try to try to help as much as possible and know your limitations and what you're looking for because some people they think that they're better than their raid group they think that because they wipe a bunch with their raid group they're like oh I don't need this I'm just gonna go to Gilgamesh I don't need this shit I'll just go to the promised land you know and it's like yeah. are you fucking kidding me man are you fucking kidding me like you are no better than your group like i don't know i don't know when that thought entered your mind but you're fucking completely wrong you are completely wrong you are as good as your group like like in like in certain situations you'll see like one one like outstanding member and he stays with that group with like you know kind of like the lower skill group like there's always cases like that but for the most part um for the most part you need to know your limitations you need to know like what like you need you need to know like the skill level of your other group members too and like if you need to understand that sometimes like when you wipe <laughs> you're not better than than like the other raid 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 members you know what i'm saying like it just like it like it typically doesn't work that way so like that's that's what that's what i would suggest to, to give another perspective on this this question was asked when we were talking about like um players who who are uh kind of trying to or starting to raid when they haven't raided before so if you're um from, from another perspective if you're a brand new raider and you're looking trying to look for a good group honestly the best thing you could do is is be social and get out there and, and strut your stuff join join pfs join pugs um, if, if you're good at your class and if you practice your class and if you if you know the fights because you watch the videos join some clear parties join some farm parties if you're really good, you will be noticed. People will notice you. Like, you know, people who are looking for groups are just like, yeah, this guy kicked ass in this Nidhogg, and he's just like, every time I'm in a group with him, it's just super easy. And turns out he doesn't have a raid group. You know, people will notice you. So I think that's the best thing you can do. What do you guys think, Frosty, Bandy? Anyone else? I think that's pretty good. I mean, I was going to say ask a lot of questions, but in the all honesty, when you don't, people can say everything in the world to make you want to join their group, and then it turns out it's complete shit, even though they gave you yeah. all the right answers to it. Um, just go out there and just play with people. Uh, I, when I first started playing this game, I was a scrub. I mean, we're all scrubs when we first start playing this game, except for Xeno. So, you know, you know. <laughs> no one can be as good as you are, Xeno, baby rage. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, when I first started playing, uh, I think it was, like, back at, right before 2.2. Um, and I was out there, and I was just, I made a link shell, and I was like, I'm tired of finding crappy players. Every time I get a good player, I'm just going to ask them to join my link shell here so we can just help each other out with content. Uh, I was in this small FC that uh, was just my friends, and we didn't really invite any, anyone else, and so I just had a little mini network of people. And eventually I was like, hey... New content. All right, uh, I want to get a group together. How am I going to get a group together? Um, and so I just ask people in that link show. I mean, you just gotta go out there, do party finder stuff a lot. I, I would agree. Yeah, just do do primal, do all that stuff. Um, and what Zeno said as well. Like, I can tell you the way I find the group I'm in currently is I, you know, as I, I network in the past, 
and I spoke to one of my friends who I, you know, who is very social, more social than I am, and knows everyone everywhere. And I said, hey, do you know of a group looking for this? And this is the sort of thing I'm looking for. He said, oh, yeah, I hear this group looking for it, you know. So just, just talk to people, ask, see if they know a group where you might fit in. I know Box are very good at <clears throat> finding great spots for people or finding people to fill in for stacks because he, you know, he networks. So just get out and network, make friends, ask around. Definitely. All right. Last question. Last question. We've come this far, yeah. friends. Yeah, we're, we're keeping the show under two to three hours, right? Yeah, we're keeping the yeah, show okay. under two yeah, to three hours. Cool. Jesus Christ, happened. man. I thought yeah. I was going to get back and I'd ask you guys how it went. <laughs> Fuck, man. Well, we just hit four. All right. Last question, four hours, supposed to be under two. With EX Primals being added to Raid Finder, hopefully Sophia will be, do you think that will incentivize the use of Raid Finder and will you, we, fuck, and will you see more possible groups forming because of it? Also, would you use it to play with people on other servers? Yo, I'm gonna, yo, I'm gonna take this one real quick. I'm gonna take this one, man. All right, so. So first off, I want to point out that there should not be a raid finder and a duty finder. No, 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 no. They, there should be a finder. Imagine yeah. a world. Imagine a world with me, friends, where they there is do the same a fucking finder. Thing. Why, yeah, right. Preach it, yeah. man. Preach it. It's a it finder, matter, right? You know what? You, you know what the finder does? It finds things. It finds things for the groups that queue into it. And there should just be the finder, you know? And But anyway, to answer the question, if EX primals are added to the raid finder, uh, I would imagine uh, that, that people would use the raid finder more. I would hope that people would use the raid finder more. Um, I already use the raid finder quite a bit. Uh, I actually use the raid finder to trial my EU group uh, uh, when I was trialing with them. Uh, I use the raid finder for that. I try, or I uh, use the raid finder for speed kills. Um, I use the raid finder to queue in with other people on other servers, like uh, Gilgamesh. We did that last Balmong. night. We did that. Yeah, me and Bach did that last night. Um, Met some cool guys. Yeah, we queued did in with, with Ren uh, from Balmung. I'm pretty sure he's from Balmung. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I mean it was I awesome. I recognized that guy. Yeah, so like I, yeah. I use the raid finder. Uh, um, I use the Raid Finder quite often, actually. Uh, not as much as Duty Finder, obviously, but I do use it. Uh, but I can see where people would never use it as well. And, yeah, I hope that with the EX Primal is being put into it, I definitely hope that, that it I will think, increase the number of people that use it. I, I, think, I think the biggest thing, though, is the way you type it is Raid Finder is not being used the way it was intended to be used either. Because it was intended to be more like Duty Finder, but for raids. But all it's currently being used for is people to raid hook cross up, server. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Not, it's not hook up. It, it, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's no, being, no, have a good time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's being used to just queue in cross server. So what they really need to do is just add a way, just add a cross server party finder already. Three and months, then, man. And then join Duty Finder and Raid Finder into one thing because they should be the same thing. And make a cross server. I don't. Party I don't like cross server pro party finder. We talked. About, I that was one of the topics last last unchained. Uh, I don't. I, don't like I just. I I didn't want to be able to play with my friends on other servers. I. I it's I awesome don't, for streamers, like, but not server community. I don't think. But yeah, I I think server like uh, you know, kind of uh, within your own server. I think that community is important, and I think cross server party finder would uh, would kill that. I, I have so many friends on other servers in the data center, and I, yeah. I would like to play with them. Yeah, fair so, enough. I mean, there's, there's I, pros I and cons like, either way, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I feel like if they implemented it correctly, it would be okay. Like, they're, they're doing that. Are they doing that triple triad cross server room or something? So that might be fun. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I definitely think cross uh, server finder is just something that the game has to go into, even if we don't want it. Uh, to get people playing the game and to be able to get more access to content, you need more access to more players. Um, and a lot of servers got hit really hard, and it is yeah. slowly killing the game without having that access to players. Yeah, like, I think the using the, like, the raid finder in the way that we do isn't... Yeah, it's definitely not what we... Like, like my... 
Um, the way I use the rate finder is, is I, I think is very specific because like I have a lot of friends and stuff on other servers, but I think the way they intended it <laughs> to be used was just totally oh, some, different. some random guy. Oh man, I feel like doing a five, yo, queuing up, boom, yeah. pop get in, you know, and kill it, you know, but that, that, uh, mm, that doesn't happen very often. I don't think it does anyway. <laughs> has, has it, I mean, has someone in chat ever done that? Because I honestly don't feel like it's ever been used that way. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it has. I just like, uh, I mean, no, I actually, no, you know what? One of my friends, Japan. one of my friends got their A7 confirm. kill. One of my friends got their A7 kill through Raid Finder. He just queued up for it. Now, I don't know if it was like, you know, hey, I know these guys on this other server, but I know he got his first A7 kill uh, through Raid Finder. He actually sent me, the, sent me the video, and it was hype as fuck at the end. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. But then again, I don't know if he knew the people he was queuing in with either. So, Yeah. So I don't know. Raid Finder is a really good tool, though, to use when you're you like trial or speed kills and shit like that. I just I just don't think that it's used in the way that they wanted it to be used. I guess I, don't I, know. I think it's definitely not used in the way they wanted it to be used. <laughs> but then again, it probably is used for that purpose in Japan. So you know, different different cultures, right? Star cultures, not that. Yeah, yeah, that's another good point too. It might be completely different over there. Yeah. Um. Well. Well, friends, it's been four hours. We were supposed to do a two-hour show, but I guess we, we we went a little over on that. As usual. A little over. Uh. Well, did any uh did any of you have anything else to add before uh. Before closing. Nope. I thought yeah. it was a great show. I had a lot of fun. I, I got something, man. What's I think up? There's not enough like uh, anger and bullshit and bully on this. I think this was a little bit too calm. So, uh, say you know, yeah. <laughs> so fuck you, Zeno. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> wow. Oh, that's yeah, fucking crazy, mean as shit, dude. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, uninstall, man. I saw you miss that fail, Cleve. <laughs> oh man, you should have seen me miss two living dads back to back today in A6 speed runs, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking triggered, Wait, dude. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. I just don't want to talk about it, man. Feels bad, man. Uh, okay. So anyway, all right. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up now. It always sucks to wrap it up. Um, but uh, but yo, uh, Bandia, thank you so much for uh, for coming in last minute, man. Uh, definitely no appreciate it. And uh, Frosty, thanks again, man. Uh, I yeah, know man. you you pretty much we talked about it like a day or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh and yo, Bot, uh yeah man, we worked on this a lot uh together and it's pretty much like I mean, yeah man, it's always fun to do this with you. So Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure, man. Definitely appreciate you coming. Uh, yeah, definitely. You, Thanks for the good times, you know. I mean, you're, you're doing a, a good job here. Uh, just keep it up, man. Keep the Unchains coming. Oh, thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah the, I don't know uh, how often the Unchained will be. Uh, I know we've talked about maybe uh, once every other week or at least once a month. Uh, there'll definitely be more in the future, though. Um, we kind of just do it whenever we feel like it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, the focus of the show is is supposed to be on, you know, rating in general. Um, I feel like that I feel like and other people have expressed uh, that there there isn't another, like, I guess, uh, like top tier or in-game focus uh, outside of you know, like certain it's, it's kind of a Reddit void. In so, that, yeah, it's kind of like yeah. a rating niche, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a void. So we're we're hoping to fill that void a little bit, get yeah. some raid raid centric discussion going. So yeah, yeah, especially uh, before three point four um, and uh, during Prague. You know, again, uh, especially if you're just getting into it, don't don't be afraid to wipe. 
you know, it's going to happen. You're going to die. You're going to kill everybody and you're going to feel bad. Just, it's going to happen. It is. If you don't feel bad about killing everyone, you should reconsider rating. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it's going to happen and don't let it get you down. Like just, you know, shit happens sometimes, man. But, uh, but anyway, yo, uh, so I'm going to end the show. And, Wait, last uh, second shout outs, anybody? Well, last, anybody? yeah. La- oh yeah, of course. I'm sorry. Of course. Yeah. Bandia, last second shout outs. And just everyone in my group, really, and everyone on Sawyer Tennis. Uh, I just met some great people here. I transferred over, as you know, said about nine months ago. And yeah, Sawyer Tennis is a great server. I don't want to leave. So just yeah, just the server in general. Everyone. Yo, here. Frosty, you should just like you know transfer your whole static so you guys can hang out with us. <laughs> no, Sawyer Tennis. Okay. So we'll just transfer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We'll confirm. Frosty will uh, just just send the send the bill to Frosty. Yeah. yeah. And then they can say I'm being carried again. Doesn't matter which server I go to, I go to Mateus. Getting carried. Mateus <laughs> carrying you. But yeah. Is it my turn for shouts? Oh, your sure, turn, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, man. Uh, thank you guys for coming on the show. If uh, let me talk here and Zeno for letting me come on the show. Yeah. Just let me know when you're doing it, and I'll shout you out. Because I mean, it's the day right after Mog Talk, so I might as well shout yeah, you out we, through that show. Yeah, we we kind of got to this. Man, this was kind of like last minute. <laughs> this was kind of like last second. Yeah. But I, yeah, I do appreciate it, though. No, man, it was awesome to be here. And uh, thank you, everyone. I don't know how many people here actually watched uh, Mog Talk, but thank you, everyone, for supporting that show that has been going on for a little while now. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Bach, you got any shout-outs, man? Shout outs. Um, yo, you know what? Shout out to my good friend and fallen comrade, Jethrid Soul Striker. Was in our static, but uh, due to uh, physical injury or something like that, he uh, can no longer raid with us. But I've raided with him a long time. He's a good friend. Um, I'm talking like about him like he died or something, but no, he's he's okay. But he's just not <laughs> raiding with us. Uh, we got Xanther, so super happy about that, but shout out to Jeff, hope you're doing well wherever you are. I have um, another show, Rip Xanther McNuggets, after oh, being brutally oh, burned man. alive Rip Xanther by McNuggets. <sighs> the bully Hikate. If you ever run into her, fucking watch out. Yeah, just just go the other way. She's such a fucking bully. Jesus man. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my my shout outs, my shout outs always, always. Yo, go to Twitch chat. Big shout out to Twitch chat. I love Twitch chat. Uh, Twitch chat is slowly becoming a part of who I am. It's 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 slowly it's 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 entering my body in a lewd way and it's it's taking control in 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 lewd fashions. And you know what? I like it. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like it a little bit. And. Uh, I love Twitch chat, um, and yeah, shout out to to all the people that support the stream, uh, all the people that are here tonight, uh, all the subs. Uh, I had uh, we had a couple subs tonight. Uh, thank you guys very much for that. Obviously, I had the alerts and shit turned off, um, but I definitely saw it um, and definitely appreciate that. Um, but anyway, yo, uh, I think that's it. I'm bad at beginning and starting this. This is only my second time. <laughs> So yeah, you're um, real bad at beginning and starting this, dude. I. <laughs> <laughs> what about ending? Pain train <laughs> coming in hot. <laughs> but anyway, yo. So, so so that's it, yo. That's it. We're done. Uh, hope Good you guys enjoyed 3. the show. 4. Good luck with three point four. Um, yeah, me and I know me and Bach are always looking for stuff to do. So if you guys need any help in Party Finder or Raid Finder, man, hit us up. We're always same, down. Same with me, honestly. I'm always yep. bored if I'm right. Yep. Yeah, so. man. Oh, man. I completely forgot something. Uh, shout out to Carrara for being the best thing in the world. There we go. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, but anyway, yo, thanks again, guys, for coming on the show. Uh, but yeah, I'm in the stream. So have a good night. Peace. Don't forget. Unchained, bitch. Unchained, bitch.